Commissioner Kulias. Here. Commissioner Kulianis. Here. Commissioner DiDonato. Here. Um, this evening's invocation will be given by Chaplain, Chaplain Ted Morris of the Salvation Army, if we can all stand. And at the end of the invocation, remain standing and pledge allegiance to the flag. Let's bow for prayer. Our Father, thank you for our mayor and for the members of this commission who give of their time and experience to lead this great city. Thank you for those who support them in so many ways, the city manager, city attorney, and their staff members, law enforcement, and fire and rescue, and various city crews and teams who keep Tarpon Springs the special place that it is. Thank you that we can come together in a public setting such as this for the citizens to hear from the commission members regarding various issues affecting all of us and for the commission to hear from those whom they represent. We pray for your guidance over these proceedings that this meeting will be productive for the overall betterment of our city. We make this prayer in the name of the one who gave and sustains life. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. We have two proclamations this evening and some presentations that we're going to get to right after that. Ms. Brewer, if you could come forward. Uh, Ms. Brewer is our uh, city's arborist. She does an outstanding job, and um, hopefully we'll have a, a huge canopy over the town someday. At least we can always wish, wish for that. Uh, the proclamation is for National Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the world, and whereas the city of Tarpon Springs has been recognized as a Tree City USA for the last 16 years, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderate outdoor temperatures, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are, renew are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, beautify our community, and are an ingredient to many south-sold communities in daily use. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. Whereas trees, whenever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal and are a legacy to our children and grandchildren to enjoy. Now, therefore, I, Coast of Atticotis, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2024, the last Friday of April, as the 152nd anniversary of National Arbor Day. And I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, City Manager. Uh, this is part of the Tree City USA program that we read this proclamation. And I'm ecstatic for the Tree City USA program. We were recognized for our tree inventory, phase one. And we received a growth award last year. That's for going above and beyond. Not many cities actually do that. If you'd like to learn more about that, please go to Connect Tarpon Springs and follow us on there. We are starting phase two, as well as the awesome project Limb Up for Safety. And please look forward to a survey on there. Help us out. Thank you. And thank you so very much. Menino.
Ms. Uh, Denise Menino is the uh, chairperson of our sustainability committee here in Tarpon Springs. How are you this evening? Mm -hmm. And she's here to receive the proclamation for Earth Day. <clears throat> Who has the first Earth Day in 1970 recognize the importance of every person needing to participate in preserving our natural resources and that on the first Earth Day, 20 million Americans rallied for a healthy, sustainable environment. And whereas all life forms on Earth have a right to a healthy, sustainable environment, and as stewards of the planet, we all have an obligation to change human behaviors that contribute to the environmental degradation, thereby preserving the Earth's beauty and natural resources. And whereas this obligation extends not only to today's stewards, but also to those of the future who will inherit the planet from us. And whereas Tarpon Springs is fortunate to have 740 acres of parks, open space, conservation land and trails, which enrich the lives of both residents, visitors and wildlife and provide habitat for various flora and fauna, natural resources and many diverse recreational opportunities. And whereas the city of Tarpon Springs supports projects and programs that demonstrate and encourage sustainability and conservation of our natural resources within the community. And whereas the city's goal is to build a future in which residents live in harmony with nature and wildlife within Tarpon Springs, thereby contributing to the planet's biological diversity. And whereas the city of Tarpon Springs will continue to advocate for Earth Day and will continue to support environmental awareness, natural resource conservation, wildlife conservation, sustainable practices, and much more related to the well-being of our planet. Now, therefore, I, Coast S. Vatikiotis, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, do hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2024, as Earth Day. And I encourage all citizens to become engaged in local and global efforts to help improve and protect our environment for all living beings. Congratulations. This is near and dear to my heart and uh, to re be receiving this on behalf of all of you. And I thank you commissioners and mayor and city manager for choosing me to receive this because I have worked for a long time to help this city be more sustainable. But it's on behalf of all the citizens of this community and my children, your children, my grandchildren, your grandchildren, all future generations, that it's wonderful that we're holding Earth Day as something that is a high priority in this city and I'm just blessed. Thank you. Beyond what I could express. Thank you so much. I should add, uh, Ms. Menino and the uh, Sustainability Committee started from scratch three years ago. We didn't have a committee before that. We didn't have a sustainability coordinator within the city of Tarpon Springs responsible for sustainability issues. And, and uh, they've done an outstanding job in putting a sustainability action plan together. And so that is as important as our comprehensive plan, which basically determines how we develop the city in the future, and also our strategic plan, which uh, tells us not to forget what our goals are of maintaining a hometown atmosphere here in Tarpon Springs. So sustainability is very important. It's just not environmental. It's also social and it's economic as well. You could have the best environment in the world, but if you don't have the economy to sustain it, there's not going to be anyone here. If you don't have the social services, and I'm not talking about just hospitals, doctors, but I'm talking about grocery stores, post offices, colleges, schools, and that sort of thing, people are going to go elsewhere for those items. So that's the three-legged stool of sustainability. You remove either any of those three, the environment, the economic, or the uh, social element, the stool falls. So it's a very active and important committee that they've got going, and, and uh, it, it, I just very much appreciate all of their work. Thank you.
Tony, do you want to get us started on this? Yes, sir. Good evening. Yeah. Mayor? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to say something? Let's go ahead and do public comments on any of the uh, proclamations. Thank you, Mr. Delakis. This would be probably uh, public comments on any of the two proclamations that we just uh, um, had. Thank you for the time, Peter Delakis, 514 Ashland Avenue. It's wonderful to see all these young faces here because it's important that you learn some of these lessons to carry on for those of us who will not be able to carry the load going forward. Now, you talked about 740 acres, and I'm going to talk to you about the future. You can add 74 acres to that. And then you provide a place for these kids to go and observe nature. We can put in some campgrounds so kids can take time to go and experience nature more than just a field trip. So important things that they will learn about the sustainability of life requires the integration of all of us, species, land, trees, flowers, and such. So I'm glad to see that on the program you have today about your, your poster contest, and that's a good thing. I do want to say, though, I'm proud of the city that it's turning this direction forward and going to preserve as much of what we have available left to us. We are lucky we have a tree ordinance. Pasco, Pinellas County, they don't a few cities around the county have that. We thank John Hubbard and Shauna Morris and some others who pushed that forward in those years past. But it's not enough through that. You need to learn more about how life is all interchangeable and it's all sustained by each other part. So I bless you all. May you have good knowledge to come forward, but it's up to you coming forward to learn these lessons so you can carry forward sustaining our earth so we do have a place to live. Because if you look at history, sometimes the biggest collapses of civilization has been through environmental aspects. Droughts, floods, various things that have collapsed societies. Let that not be our case. Thank you. Um, are there any other public comments? Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, com commissioners, do you have anything? Vice Mayor Eisner. Thank you, Mayor. So, youngsters, you got to hear some nice, large words. Sustainability, environmental. I know some of you may know what some of these words are, but I know when I was your age, they zipped right over my head. So I wanted to explain to you what you just listened to. It's protecting our air. It's protecting our water. It's picking up that piece of trash that's blowing in the wind. You're here to help make it better for you in the future. We want to have our land clean. We want to have trees growing. We want to have flowers that was mentioned by Mr. Delacus. These are all things that this board and this committee wants to do so that when you're of the age that we're at, you have what we have. So I wanted to thank the Sustainability Committee because they're the ones right now that are initiating what's going to be your future. And we would love for you to take it, take it from there. It's like the handoff of the baton. We're going to hand off that baton to all of you. So thank you very much for what you do. And congratulations for coming here and seeing a board meeting as you're doing today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions? 
John, go ahead. Commissioner Koulianis. John's good. Um, I'll call them youngsters, young people, however you want to be uh, acknowledged as. But you know what, um, what the mayor said about you know, the things we're doing in town to create a better life for you when you grow up uh, is important. We, you know, there's, uh, um, adults have done a lot of good things and there's a lot of things we've done that haven't been as good. And I think here in Tarpon, we are conscious about, you know, planting trees and looking at um, you know, we have to progress. Um, so there's things getting built, but yet we have to try to preserve our way of life and also have an environment for you kids to grow up to enjoy. Um, most of what we do isn't for us. You know, I have a one-year-old granddaughter and I, I get to look at her and say, you know, the decisions that we make and that I make up here that I always keep her face in my eye and in my heart. And the same thing, I wish you guys could come to all of our meetings because I think we would have a better perspective because every time we make a decision, we'd have to look at you and understand that it affects you more so than it does us. So um, you're welcome here anytime and just your faces and your presence would keep us uh, always uh, looking at the North Star, because I think you are the North Star for all of us. So thank you for, for being here. Um, I also wanted to recognize uh, Ms. Dory Larson. Yeah, you, you're looking in the right place. Um, Ms. Larson was the first uh, chairperson of the Sustainability Committee that got it started. There was a little bit of tug and war back then, but everybody got on the right track. So if you could just raise your hand or uh, there you are. So. Um, Tony, uh, as you can see, the commission feels that this is an extremely important part of the meeting, which I agree. But before we get started, I'd like for the parents to raise your hands because I'm getting a hard time making a distinction between parents and children <laughs> these days. All right, any grandparents here? There you go. I congratulate you for being here. Thank you. I'm a grandparent too, just like many of us up here. So, Tony, thank all right, you. Very good. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Manager, Commissioners, thank you all again for your undying support uh, for public education and outreach uh, regarding stormwater and tarpon. We, we appreciate it. And perfect segue with Arbor Day and Earth Day right into our uh, pollution contest. Um, my name is Tony Manello. I'm with Public Works. I'm the Streets and Stormwater Supervisor uh, for the city. We're here tonight to recognize some, some very talented students. Uh, we've had over just under 500 uh, submissions of our poster contest this year. Um, so you've got the nine most talented uh, artists here to this evening. Um, the, the the poster contest I refer to, it's kind of wordy. I'm, I'm working on, Tom's working on me to abbreviate it, but essentially it's My Tarpon Springs Clean Waters Stormwater Pollution Prevention Poster Contest. <laughs> Three times fast, go ahead. Um, what we typically do, uh, we started out years ago with uh, honoring one school each year and rotating to give these awards to the top three artists. Um, upon encouragement by the mayor, we decided, hey, every school, every year. So all three of our elementary schools uh, are participating. Uh, it includes fourth and fifth grade students from each elementary school uh, to show their creativity, talents, um, by creating a poster which displays their understanding and their take, thoughts, and ideas in the areas of pollution prevention, clean water benefits, animal or vegetation habitat impacts, uh, impacts of stormwater runoff to our local beaches, river, bayous, and ponds. Uh, environmental awareness of, of young students is, uh, is now and always really will be a huge part of maintaining our community's clean waters. Uh, and it also assures the uh, sustainability of these natural resources for your enjoyment and, as mentioned earlier, your, your families in the future. Um, we're here tonight to acknowledge these nine st students, um, once again from Tarpon Springs Elementary School, Sunset Hills Elementary School, 
and Tarpon Springs Fundamental School. Um, each, each winner, uh, first, second, and third, will receive a gift card as well as a, a certificate of achievement signed by the mayor and presented by the mayor. Uh, third place will receive $25 gift card. Second will receive a $50 gift card. And first place is a $100 gift card. So um, our car test uh, winner's artwork has been displayed in a foyer for about a month. Uh, hopefully, um, in past meetings you were at, you might got to see some of them. There's some really talented works up there. Um, without further ado, students, um, when your name is called, please come up and receive your award from the mayor. And, uh, Mr. Manola, we have them stay up here, is that correct? Or do, how do you want to do that? You would like to have all nine stay and then do group photo we'll have again? a big photo after that. Okay, so uh, guys, as I mentioned earlier, instead of going back to your seat till the end, go ahead and stay up along the dais there and along the board, and uh, we'll get a group photo at the end. Okay, we're going to start with Tarpon Springs Elementary School this year. Um, I'd like to congratulate the third place uh, award goes to fourth grade student Alana Kelly. Congratulations. All right. Second place at Tarpon Springs Elementary goes to fourth grade student Elena Diaz. And the first placed winner from Tarpon Springs Elementary this year was Kinsley Fosenbaker. Good job, Kinsley. Kinsley. There you go. Can we have your hand? There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I need to tell everybody, Tarpon Elementary is my alma mater. I went to school at Tarpon Elementary, although you probably don't believe me, but I did. <laughs> um, go ahead. All right, next up we have Sunset Hills Elementary School. Uh, congratulations to the third place winner. Um, actually, a third grade student, Kaylee Brown. There you go. Thank you. Did you want to come over here, Haley? Second place is a fourth grade student, Quinn Taylor. And our first place recipient today, tonight from Sunset Hills is Abigail Netzel. She brought her fan club. I, I need to interject also, Commissioner Kulia, didn't you go somewhere nearby? Sunset Hills is my alma mater, <laughs> and that's a class of 98. <laughs> Mine yeah. was 1776, so. <laughs> this, this, this may break out in a pep rally. Okay, uh, last but not least, uh, Tarpon Springs Fundamental School. I'd like to congratulate third place award winner, fifth grade student, Charlotte Going. Okay. And second place from Tarpon Springs Fundamental is L'Oreal Saunders. All right, and our last award winner tonight, which a little side note here, had the most discussions of city staff in the last month. Um, <laughs> excellent, you know, everyone did a ph phenomenal job, um, but I would like to congratulate first place winner goes to fifth grade student, Nola Costa. I'd like the commission to come up for the photograph, please. City manager. City clerk, if you'd like to. Um, I want to congratulate everybody. These are one of two things, either our future engineers or our future artists or both. And uh, keep that in mind and, um, you know, it, you're just beginning the race. And it's never where you are in the race, it's where you wind up at the end of the race. So just keep that in mind. You may be third place, but someday you're going to be first place. And sometimes you'll get knocked back a little bit. You just got to get right back up there. So congratulate everybody. Congratulations. Everybody. Thank you, everybody.
And parents, thank you for coming out and grandparents as well. Okay. Y'all can go back to your seats now, thank you. Um, what we're gonna do is just take about a, a one minute break and let the parents uh, round up the children and leave it if they'd like. The rest of the meeting's actually quite boring. <laughs> You want to break? All right. Let's go ahead and take a five minute recess. We'll reconvene at um, 701.
Yeah, your microphone's off. That some people might think that's good. <laughs> so, um, we're going to have the external financial audit, um, Mr. Herring, uh, City Manager of Yes, yeah, Mr. Herring and the other introduce our external auditor. Uh, good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Ron Herring, Finance Director, and I, I guess the kids didn't want to stay for the audit for this part. <laughs> um, tonight we have the presentation of the city's external independent financial audit. State Statute 218.39 requires local governments to have an annual financial audit performed by an independent certified public accountant within nine months of the end of the fiscal year. The city's audit can be found on the city's web, website under the document library. The firm of Malden and Jenkins was retained by the city to perform this audit. They're in the fourth year of their uh, agreement. And tonight we have Daniel Anderson, partner with Malden and Jenkins to present the city's audit. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. Uh, as Ron mentioned, my name is Daniel Anderson and I'm the partner with Malden and Jenkins who oversaw the city's 2023 fiscal year end audit. I will try my best to make this presentation feel as rewarding as the one prior to mine, but I have a feeling I'm going to follow up a little bit short. Um, I do have a brief presentation for you here this evening. It'll give you some information about Malden and Jenkins. I'll talk about the audit opinions and the annual comprehensive financial report. I'll go through the required communications that we have for you under government auditing standards and then take any questions or comments that you may have at the end. First, a little bit of information about Malden and Jenkins. As Ron mentioned, we are in our fourth year of performing our audit, so hopefully we're not new and unfamiliar to you. Uh, this slide really just provides some information about our firm. Our governmental niche is the firm's largest niche, serving over 700 governmental entities in the Southeast. Your audit was performed from our Bradenton, Florida office location. And the last thing that I'll draw your attention to is the top right there that, that talks about our experience with single audits over federal grant awards because the city did undergo a single audit in the current year. So we audit over 225 major programs on an annual basis covering over $4 billion of federal grant grants. So certainly we have a lot of experience in performing single audits. The annual comprehensive financial report is uh, the city's financial statements where the city does choose to go above and beyond what's required under government accounting standards. Uh, those additional sections are the introductory section and statistical section. It is a very large document, so if you're somewhat new to it, um, you know, I certainly encourage you to meet with Ron, um, and you know, if you want to meet with us as the auditors, you know, we could sit and go through any questions that you have in detail. Um, but some areas that I would highlight in review of our you are the management's discussion and analysis. This is where management provides uh, some information about the current year as well as the prior fiscal year and the changes that occurred during the year. There's a lot of really good narrative in that also to discuss why those changes occurred. And also the statistical section. This section gives 10 years worth of information so you can really see where the city has come from 10 years ago uh, through the current year and it provides a lot of really good trend analysis that you can perform. Uh, the main reason we perform an audit obviously is to give our opinion on the financial statements. I do wanna note that we do evaluate the city's internal control structure to help us determine the procedures that we're performing uh, for the purpose of expressing our opinion on the basic financial statements. However, we're not providing an opinion on the effectiveness of internal controls. Our audit was performed in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and government auditing standards in order to provide a reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free of material misstatement. And the financial statements are the responsibilities of city's management. I'm happy to report that we've issued an unmodified opinion, which is the highest form of assurance that we can render. Uh, therefore, in our opinion, the financial statements are free of material misstatement for the 2023 fiscal year. There are some additional reports in the back of the, of the document. Uh, the first one is a compliance report or a yellow book report, we call it, which is our test of the city's internal controls and compliance with respect to significant laws, rules, and regulations. This reports what we call a negative assurance report, so we're not providing an opinion. However, we notate any findings that we find throughout the audit process and I'm happy to report that there were no findings reported in the current year. Uh, I mentioned previously the city has had to undergo a single audit in the current year, and that's where the city expends more than $750,000 in federal awards. Um, the city spent approximately $2 million in those federal awards, and we performed a single audit on two major programs that covered a little under $1.75 million of the $2 million. And I'm happy to report that there were no issues with our testing of compliance or internal controls over compliance with respect to those major programs that we audited. 
Lastly, the Auditor General requires us to issue a management letter over our testing of um, the city's compliance with the rules of the Auditor General. There's no issues with respect to this testing. And then Florida statutes require us to perform an examination over the investment of public funds and ensure that they're in accordance with Florida statutes as well as the city's policies. And we had no issues with regard to the investment of the, fund, of the public funds uh, here at the city of Tarpon Springs. Moving on to the required communication, like the financial statements, management is responsible um, for the accounting policies that are notated in note one of the financial statements. There was a new significant accounting standard uh, that was implemented in the current year related to subscription-based IT arrangements. If you remember last year's statements, we brought in a new standard regarding leases where we kind of took lease agreements that you had in excess of a year and brought those on the balance sheet and recorded a right to use the lease as well as a lease liability. Uh, the subscription-based arrangements is really the same accounting principles, but it's over subscription items and not um, you know, right to use lease software or lease items. Um, so that is included in the 2023 fiscal year financial statements. Uh, as part of our audit, we do evaluate all the accounting policies and procedures um, and noted no issues with respect to those policies that the city has selected. There are some significant judgments and estimates in the financial statements, which we evaluated and performed procedures to make sure that those estimates are reasonable in accordance with our experience in accordance with um, government auditing standards and the, and the like. Um, some of those significant accounting estimates are the fair value of your investments, the city's net pension liability, the city's total OPEB liability, as well as the depreciable lives on your capital assets. So we had no issues in our evaluation of those. Um, we did receive full cooperation of the city's management and staff. You know, Ron's certainly a pleasure to work with. Uh, you guys really do have a gym here. I can't speak highly enough about Ron. Um, you know, he does prepare that act for all on his own. And, you know, we go through it very thoroughly and we don't have many changes that we're providing to him. So he really does a great job putting that document together and preparing for the audit process. At the conclusion of our audit, we obtained written representation from management over the accuracy of the information provided to us. We're not aware of management's consultations with other accountants. There were no significant issues discussed with management to bring to your attention. There were no audit adjustments or proposed adjustments. Um, and I'll pause again here and say that's a really big deal. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we audited over 700 governmental entities and we can't say that comment for many of them. So that's really job well done by the city. No, we're not aware of the, the financial statements included in any other documentation. And lastly, Malden and Jenkins is independent with respect to the city. Uh, you should have two items in your agenda packet. One would be the financial statements themselves, and the, the second one is a document that we issue called our auditor's discussion and analysis. That details in a written format all the required communications that I just went through. Um, there were no findings or recommendations to provide to you, so there's nothing in there. And it also talks about some upcoming GASB pronouncements. Um, so if you wanna do any light reading on that, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. We certainly appreciate the opportunity to serve as your auditors. And with that, I'll answer any questions that you guys have. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Let me go to uh, public comments first, see if we have any, are there any public comments on this item? Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any comments or questions? Go ahead, Vice Mayor Eisner. I just want to thank you and mostly um, thank Ron, because I see many nights he's out there burning the midnight oil. And it's nice to know he's not just eating the M&Ms that are in that big bowl when he walks in. He's really doing his job. And you know, I love you. You know you're doing a great job. I always commend you, even no matter what. Um, but this, this is your report card. And it's an excellent report card. So thank you. We appreciate what you do. And, uh, Commissioner Quillianis, go ahead. Yep. So Dan, um, you know, I started my, my first assignment as an auditor was uh, auditing the city of Wachula. And I, th I think things have changed a lot. I mean, there is a heck of a lot more to these financials and your duties than what existed uh, 30 plus years ago. So, but um, I assume Ron found that $1, he was up there late at night 
Uh, he was out of balance by a dollar. I assume he found it. Um, so Dan, would you do, would you do a public service um, and and explain in you know in a very brief way the difference between an external auditor and an internal auditor? And the reason I'm asking that is. I was I was in the audience the one year when I don't think I don't know if it was you or one of your uh, your associates um, was presenting and somebody from in public comment was asking why didn't you find this thing or that thing um, but explain the difference between an internal audit and an external audit and again I don't want you you don't have to get into depth but I I think the audience probably needs may not understand the difference. Certainly, I think the definition of an audit in general is something that you know causes a lot of people questions to say, okay, we had the audit, you know, did they find fraud, things like that. You know, certainly in the external audit process, we're providing an opinion on the fairness of the presentation of the financial statements. We have to evaluate internal controls um, to design our procedures to help us support that opinion. Uh, again, on those presentation of the financial statements as of a fiscal year end date, which the city's is September 30, 2023. On an internal audit side, um, you know, internal audit works with management and governance to perform what they call a risk assessment to say, you know, these are operational areas within the city that we feel are a risk to the city and we want to perform procedures on a recurring basis over those various operational areas, um, not as of necessarily a point in time, but over a period of time um, that isn't the same every single year. Um, and you're designing procedures based on different standards, similar procedures, but you're following different standards in order to test the city's compliance and internal controls with respect to those risks to ensure you know, that you're addressing those risks uh, and reducing that risk to a minimum level. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I just want to say, Mr. Anderson, thank you for the presentation, the audit, and re reinforcing with the residents how great of a financial department we have in Ron himself. Thank you. I, I would echo, I just want to thank you for your presentation and certainly glad that uh, Ron has been here. Uh, he's almost a grandfather of our finance department, but uh, glad to have you. Thank you both. Yeah, I, 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 uh, if, if I ever hear any of y'all give a bad report, I'm gonna start looking up at the sky for a meteor about to strike the earth um, and Ron won't be here either. So um, thank you very much for the audit and um, by the way, I think Mr. Herring may have, uh, I love the CAFR, and um, that's how I got started. And the 10-year history of Tarpon Springs finances is, is really outstanding to see which way we're going and, and where we're heading. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay. Item four is the Sustainability Committee annual report. Ms. Menino or Tommy, come on up. Mr. Kiger and Ms. Menino, come on up. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Vitikiotis, members of the board. Uh, my name is Thomas Kiger. I'm the Public Services Director, and it's my pleasure to introduce Denise Menino, the chair of our Sustainability Advisory Committee, to deliver their annual report. Okay. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. And um, I'll do it. How, how do I switch the slides on this? Just the down? Okay, perfect. If I haven't met you before, it's my pleasure to meet you and I'm really glad to see that this evening seemed very war well coordinated with the Arbor Proclamation and the Earth Day Proclamation and the children's artwork. We couldn't have asked for more coordination and beauty in preparing for my presentation because it really made the value of sustainability come home for everybody. So we have a couple of our committee members here tonight, but the current members include myself and Dory Larson, who you met, and uh, Carol Mickett, Robin Sanger, who I'm sure most people on the commission know, uh, Taylor Mandalu, um, <laughs> and I'm Siobhan Nehan, and Peggy Varberis. Um, who are our, our alternates. Our staff liaison is, is Tommy Kiger, 
and he's now our public services director and former sustainability coordinator robin reeves was really very much a part of our last year so we're mentioning her now and our previous city liaison was paul smith mentor counselor sustainability sensei he was very very helpful to us as our committee began and and i cannot um compliment Dory's guidance enough. Dory Larson really went above and beyond in being able to help us get off the ground. It was very challenging to na navigate that at first, and she was really instrumental. So we, we meet the, on a monthly basis on the third Thursday. That will be this Thursday. We welcome, and I'm just gonna put the word out there, anybody from the public that is interested to come to the meetings. We have public comments at the beginning of the meetings so that you don't have to sit through anything that's dry or not too exciting. But we really would welcome everybody to be there from the public. So the process to progress in 2023 was that we took the STAR framework, which Dory brought to the table, and it was a very enormous project trying to reduce these um, items to items that were really applicable to Tarpon Springs. And we finally uh, had to, out of a reality check, bring them down to 50 realistic workable items that we could use as action steps for the future. We reviewed the first and second drafts of the sustainability plan that Robin and an intern wrote. Uh, we received updates to the sustainability timeline each month and the committee recommended the BOC approve the sustainability plan. So Robin Reeves presented the final plan to the Board of Commissioners in June 2023, and Ms. Reeves implemented the BOC feedback into our sustainability plan. And July 11th, 2023, the final sustainability plan was adopted by the BOC. And the committee received presentations and advised um, the staff on sustainability items as we went along after that happened. And we've had a little bit of a lapse <coughs> in personnel, uh, as you all know. That, so we have been hungry for information, constantly learning, and just maintaining connection with other things that were happening in the city as we went. So we celebrate the collaboration to completion and the city had a green team that included sustainability staff team members from all of the departments, the sustainability committee itself, the sustainability coordinator, the community which gave feedback and adoption per resolution 2023-22 on July 11th, 2023 was it. It was the success. Sustainable Tarpon Springs is a living document. It's to be adjusted as time and growth demand, and it's, uh, we're really endeavoring to keep it um, a workable um, document, holding the delicate balance between people, planet, and prosperity. And it's been our really exciting um, revelation to see how much it was integrated into the comprehensive plan. I don't feel like anything was neglected in the comprehensive plan, it was beautiful. Simultaneously, as we went through the last year, um, and we had a lot of community engagement opportunities, so in partnership with the Tarpon Springs Tarpon Arts, City of Tarpon Springs Sustainability staff hosted a four-part Knowledge and Nibbles series on actionable items for citizens on water conservation, Florida-friendly landscapes, a problem of microplastics, and the experts on all of these respective fields spoke and answered questions. We also had a successful Earth Day celebration at the Tarpon Springs Library, and I really, think that all of the committee believes that inspiring through education completes a circle and taking uh, sustainability to the most local level, which would be our households. And hopefully that will be something that we see more of in connection to the public in the year to come. 
thinking globally and acting locally is how a city places its piece into the sustainability puzzle, since in the grand scheme, everything is interconnected, as Mayor Beta Kiotis mentioned before. We're all part of the same network of life. There was also a vulnerability assessment and action plan sponsored uh, workshops and survey in, in 2023. So through a, a resilient Florida grant, public workshops took place from April 13th through July 10th, 2023, and funding was awarded by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection Agency. Um, it was $191,000. Citizens expressed a lot of opinions on priority areas while, and, and they filled out a survey too. I, yes, I did mention that. While models were developed to forecast potential local flooding and areas to be impacted. And as you may see in this picture, um, the ultimate demonstration of the need for preparation came to us on August 30th, courtesy of Hurricane Idalia. And it was, really a miracle that we didn't have more water considering tide was really high the morning that the hurricane had passed, but it had gracefully moved out to the Gulf um, at a distance that kept us from completely being saturated. So the next steps of implementation are, um, some are underway already. Net canopy loss policy was initiated in January, 2024. Climate Action Plan Greenhouse Gas Reduction tar Target was initiated in February 2024. Um, planning and Zoning staff incorporated applicable elements of the Sustainability Plan, as I mentioned. Sustainability Committee reviewed um, the Comprehensive Plan. We just saw it in totality um, last month and had a presentation on that. So pending ordinances awaiting the comp plan ado adoption are invasive species ordinance, wetlands buffer protection, seawall ordinance creation. So our recommendations to the Board of Commissioners is to continue to support a sustainability communications plan for public education, utilizing the most accessible and popular media formats to foster community engagement on topic of sustainability. The Sustainability Committee looks forward to reviewing the final draft of the plan and will provide input. The Sustainability Committee will make and receive recommendations from the BOC on how to maintain positive, productive, seamless communication process to serve the highest interests of all Tarpon Springs. So we hope that it's a flow of uh, conversation and um, that we're always able to have um, the best interests of Tarpon Springs at heart. So my final thoughts on behalf of the committee is Tarpon Springs is a treasure trove of natural, historical, and cultural riches for which we're obligated to hold space for all future generations. I'm very thankful that my husband, in, as a photographer, had a wellspring of wonderful photos that I could draw from and putting together the presentation. And because this, these are the reasons we fell in love with Tarpon Springs in 2012. This is all about sustainability, is preserving this for future generations. But the concern of the committee, the concern of everybody that is looking at um, the planet, the condition right now is that 2023 was the hottest year on record in history and it triggered unpredictable events from firestorms in Maui to atmospheric rivers on the West Coast. And I don't think anybody could not be aware of some of the really extreme weather. The sun may be setting on our opportunity to correct our course. <coughs> So what's at stake? We feel all creatures, we as humans are part of that, large and small and everything we love. So thank you. And thank you, Ms. Any, any questions, I would be glad to try to answer. Let me go to the public first and okay. see if there's any comments or questions from them. Are there any public comments on the sustainability committee's report, annual report?
Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. <clears throat> I have to applaud the committee for all their hard work and meetings. And uh, as I said earlier, we need to be reaching out to our younger generation to maybe find a way. So a thought that kind of clicked in my head is if we could coordinate with someone at the high school who, I don't know if they have a biology club or, but if they'd like to have a representative to be on the sustainability board. And that way you can add a new viewpoint, but you're also trying to engage some of these younger people. Um, there's so many people I think that are unmentioned in how this has gotten forward. First, uh, all the committee members, but most of all, Dory. 20 years, 20 years now. We've been fighting for the environment in Darwin Springs. And I'm proud to say we're at least getting to a point where we uh, are bearing, starting to bear fruit. So thank you for all your hard work. Uh, we do have significant challenges ahead. I'd like to hopefully, I don't know what the status is of getting a sustainability coordinator, but as soon as we do, we need to get that person coordinate with the grant writer and start looking at as much money that's available out there to uh, keep our city as we love it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments? Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any other raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, Ms. Menino, Tommy, did you have anything you wanted to say or? No. Okay. Um, Ms. Menino, I, I, my comment is that I can't be any more proud of the work that your committee is doing and the coordination that's going on with our planning department with the comprehensive plan and the strategic plan. And the whole vision was to take those three plans and integrate them so that at least it charts a course into the future and identifies what our worst problems are. Um, again, it's, it's environment, but it's also economic and social as well. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to the strategic plan to maintain and preserve us hometown feel, as I mentioned before. I, I know that um, it's three years or so that um, it, it kind of started, but that was also about the same time that we got started on the comp plan, the strategic plan, the comp plan update, and the strategic plan, and the, so they've all come together. And I know there was a lot of doubt as far as this convergence of the three plans and how that was all gonna work and the timing of it and the mistiming of it, and, and is one gonna lead the other? But um, actually, Ms. Vincent kept steady, uh, steady course and just had a lot of faith that that was going to get done. So I very much appreciate that and the work that you're doing and, and uh, Mr. Smith before. I'm sure Mr. Kiger is going to continue doing an excellent job. Um, I, you know, it's one of these things that um, we've got a uh, charter revision commission that's coming up. We've got the uh, comp plan and the strategic plan that's embedded in the charter now. I would hope that we have some provision for sustainability in the charter as well, but that will uh, yet uh, remains to be seen with what the recommendations are from the Charter Revision Commission as far as bringing a recommendation on that back so we have those three uh, plans identified in the charter. So they can't, the purpose of that is so they can't be forgotten. That's, we had a strategic plan, it was forgotten. We had a comp plan but it had not been updated. We didn't have a sustainability plan, although as you heard tonight, we had um, a whole lot of interest in doing something like that, but a lot of that interest was falling on deaf ears. And finally, we, we got some momentum going and, and, and now the process is maturing. That's the key word is maturing. So thank you very much for every, all the work that you're doing and your committee's doing, so. Thank you so much for your support. Let me uh, go to the commission. Um, Vice Mayor Eisner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank you as well. And I was part of the um, comp plan and strategic plan. And I think one of the biggest things that we got out of it was um, being more de redevelopment than development. 
And um, I, I, I also wanted to touch base with something that Mr. Delac has said. You know, in Rotary, they have uh, Interact and Rotaract. And the Interact is for the junior high school and the high school and the Rotaract is for high school. Mm -hmm. And it really wouldn't hurt to have a representative be at your meetings or to ask if they would like to have their own, um, you know, because I know the uh, some of the St. Pete College does have, um, you know, days where they do sustainability and they try to replicate things that the Rotary Club does. My question is, do you also um, interact with other um, divisions, let's say Dunedin, um, Palm Harbor, Clearwater, um, because we could be doing a stellar job, and I don't want to point out any particular place that we've all seen a massive amount of trees come down and things like that. Um, do they have committees like we do, and do you also communicate with them? Are they on track to better themselves there? The, yes. this, this is what I'm thinking. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, we spent a good deal of our initial meetings going over other sustainability plans in different cities, um, Largo, Dunedin, um, West Palm Beach. I mean, there were a number of them that we looked at. And in the time that we were preparing, we actually Zoomed, you know, it was during COVID, a, a good portion of our first couple of years, um, so we did have Zoom meetings with other sustainability coordinators of different you know, areas in Pinellas County and outside of this area. And we did our best also to think about anybody that we could invite to the table as a partner. You know, we, we have a long list that we still want to probably revisit of different community groups that we could partner with in embracing the concepts of sustainability. So I, I think the I, idea of bringing young people to the table is, is perfect. I'm very, very inspired by their presence. So it would be wonderful if we, if we do figure out a way into um, that route where we are partnering with with young high school students or even students from St. Pete College. Well, like I was going to say, we could be doing our utmost and be at that 98th percentile. But if you don't have all the other people joining in, it makes it very tough. Well, um, yeah, that's you know, exactly. <clears throat> gift cards make them come. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There we go. <laughs> I'm good. Thank Fisher you. Fisher Kluganis, you've got your light on. Thank you, Denise, and thank the uh, committee for all your work and your, your sustainability uh, report that you gave um, some months ago was, was wonderful. You know, like the mayor said, it's, it's not just the physical environment. It's, it's a holistic thing, right? It's, it's the environment, it's social interaction. Um, so many elderly people are, you know, suffering from early onset dementia that comes from lack of interaction. You know, us being able to, part of that's our sustainability is getting, is connecting with those people. Like we have our programs at the library and things we have that, and even to do more. Um, you know, mental health, identifying, uh, mental health, there's a lot of stress in, in our society today uh, that comes from uh, even, you know, these children and, and knowing that, uh, you know, when we talk about the seas rising and the, and the, the global warming and all the things that are happening, mm -hmm. it, you know, they hear stuff, they hear it, they're not, they're not ignorant. And uh, it's, it's the future for them can be scary, and you know, and having again interacting with them and 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 also physical health, uh, creating an environment where people in our city walk more. Uh, but you can't do that when it's a hundred degrees and there aren't any trees to shade you. Mm -hmm. So all this all this stuff works together. 
But you know, the, like the vice mayor was saying, the, 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 the ones who have no control are the creatures, right? And we have displaced them and then we're upset when coyotes are running down the street and then people want to get their guns and shoot them. Mm -hmm. um, but we created that. We, we displaced them. Um, and I, I don't mind saying what the vice mayor alluded to, but just over our border at the resort there, they ripped everything down. For God's sake, it was a golf course. It's got fairways, they're wide open. But yet, instead of building their homes on those fairways and, and keeping all those trees, they decided it was easier and cheaper and they could make more money if they rip every tree down. It, it breaks your heart when you see that. And how many animals were displaced by them just devastating that property? So I hope that that's not something we, that's something we try not to do here. And again, like I keep talking about the vice mayor, but um, I don't want to go to his head, but he- uh, All done. Yeah, it's over, yeah, forget about that. So with, um, but it, it's, we can only control what happens in the square miles of Tarpon Springs, but having cooperation from the other communities and getting them to understand the importance of these things is, is also critical for our sustainability to expand out. And uh, anyways, I'd wanna thank you very much for what all you did. And, uh, and Absolutely. It's, it's appreciated. I, I totally agree. It has to be a, a, a fabric that's connected yeah. in order for it to really be most effective. And it will happen. You know, we just have to hold the vision in our hearts. Yeah, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Cuyas. <clears throat> Mrs. Menino, I want to thank you for the presentation. It was great. I uh, also want to thank uh, Mrs. Larson in the corner over there because she did do a lot to help and Mrs. Mickett as well. And you know, the big thing, the big thing about this is uh, these are all everyday individual residents who love their town, who want to leave it in a better place for future generations. And they were persistent. Uh, it was actually at the time where I started getting involved with politics and and following along too, and it's a real organic grassroots movement. And that's what they pulled together uh, in, in convincing the prior commission, not even this current one, about uh, getting a sustainability committee and uh, coming on board, listening to the recommendations. And uh, they've really made a difference in the community. There's a sustainability action plan. Uh, it's set out for so many years. It's got priorities listed. and and certain goals that are meant to be obtained within certain years. And, and so hopefully we can hit, hit, hit each one of them. And I remember when we first started working with the, the, the Dunedin sustainability uh, individual who helped Ms. Reeves at the time start getting together the framework. And so um, it's been a process, but again, everyday individual Tarponites who love their town, who came together for a purpose and the sustainability committee is not going anywhere. It's going to be around, and uh, its focus is to take care of future generations. So thank you all for the presentation and everything you do to work together. And uh, now we got Mr. Kiger as our public services director. So I think we're going to be good. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm not going to repeat everything everyone said, but I am in to total agreement. And I know how hard it is to start a committee from scratch and make it work and you and your colleagues both former and present have done a great job thank you thank you thank you thank you so much Ms. Menino thank you very much thank you I appreciate your time Mr. and yeah, your thank affirmation you. <laughs> thanks okay now we go to public comments are there any public comments Here to lack is 514 Ashland Avenue. Um, I'm wearing blue and yellow in honor of the Ukraine. And also, this is a bad weekend. So much death 
tragedy. We seem to make a, we have a good, you know, we can make bombs good, but we can't make peace. So I have a reading, I came across it, Jephaniah 3, 1 through 9. And it's labeled the future of Jerusalem. Woe to the city of oppressors, rebellious and defiled. She obeys no one, she accepts no correction. She does not trust in the Lord, she does not draw near to her God. Her officials are roaring lions, her rulers are evening wolves who leave nothing for the morning. Her prophets are arrogant, they are treacherous men. Her priests profane the sanctuary and do violence to the law. The Lord within her is righteous, he does no wrong. Morning by morning he dispenses his justice, and every new day he does not fail. Yet the unrighteous know no shame. I have cut off nations, their strongholds are demolished. I have left their streets deserted with no one passing through. Their cities are destroyed. No one will be left, none, no one at all. I said to the sailor, surely you will fear me and accept correction. Then her dwelling would not be cut off, nor all my punishments come upon her. But they were still eager to act corruptly in all they did. Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day I will stand up to testify. I have decided to assemble the nations, to gather the kingdom, and to pour out my wrath on them, all my fierce anger. The whole world will be consumed to be by the fire of my jealous anger. Then will I purify the lips of the people, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him shoulder to shoulder. I hope we don't fall into any kind of transflagration that that depicts. So on some good news, first off, Vice Mayor Lund, what a guy. What a guy. We, I'm sorry, Frank, we lost a good guy. I went to the town hall meeting in Pasco last night with regards to the Anklote River Park project. Uh, I sent the city an email with the article about it, but you can find it on the Times. Lots of people, packed house, short story. Uh, Mr. Overton, because he can't build 22,000 square foot and put in all the jet skis and all that stuff to make it economically feasible for him, and he won't accept 3,000 square foot building type service, they've agreed to terminate the lease. So the big restaurant's not going in. They still are going to go forward with park improvements to increase the boat parking access and they're still reserving a spot down by uh, closer to the river for potential retail, restaurants, snack bar, whatever use. So I wanted to give you that update, but I still would like, and I've <laughs> asked to find out if we ever got approval on our affected status request. Uh, so maybe we can finally get an answer to that because even though the big restaurant's not there, I think they're going to put out another RFP for some other services there and there still may be issues the city may be concerned about. But I finish speaking and I turn around and there's Craig in the audience. Still doing civic stuff for a tarpon. I applaud you. Thank you. Um, thank you, former Vice Mayor Lund, for being there last night. Um, okay, are there any other public comments? Anyone? Uh, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Um,
Let's go to the uh, consent agenda. Does uh, any commissioner wish to pull any of the items six, seven, eight, or any of those sub bullets, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14? I'm, I'm gonna take care of the attorney's fees uh, on the fly. Okay. Um, let me read the um, consent agenda. Item six is satisfaction of liens, and item seven is attorney's fees. Person Cohen, Mooney, Fernandez, Jackson, PA invoice 4991, as amended by the law firm's letter of April 16, 2024. Um, sub bullet B, Union of Salesman Jensen, invoice 80858, and unit, uh, sub bullet C, Unis Salzman Jensen PA invoice 880859. Uh, um, item eight is special events. A is Athens by night, Latin Fest, June 8th, 2024, and Athens by night, a Greek Fest, September 14th, 2024. Uh, B is Hippie Fest, August 17th, 2024. Item C is Sunset Hills uh, Elementary School Color Run. April 20th, 2024, item D is the um, St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral Good, Good Friday Procession on May 3rd, 2024. Item nine is approved chief of police to sign the amended amendment to the SRO agreement. Item 10 is extend contract number 200011 uh, golf course grounds maintenance Item 11 is award number 240093, field and turf irrigation products, landscaping products. Um, item 12 is extend file number 190104, landscape services with Morel Landscaping. Item 13 is award file number uh, 240102 for sodium hydroxide. Item 14 is award file number 240095, tires with related equipment utilizing the source well contract. Um, are there any public comments on any of these items? Uh, Peter Lax 514 Ashland Avenue 7A. If you wish to turn to it, the uh, invoice for Pearson Cohen, Mooney, Fernandez and Jackson on the agenda it read 4991. Uh, that's what you read, but I wanna reference it. Item 4990. Uh, this is the invoice for the Community Redevelopment Agency. And I do want to point out on March 19th, uh, there's an item CRA travel and appearance at CRA meeting, five hours, $1,125. And the only reason I bring this up, it may not be as relevant right now, but maybe again in the future. Uh, at the time, uh, Ms. Kardash handled the regular meeting, and Mr. Lewis, I felt sorry for him, sat over here for five almost hours waiting to get to the CRA meeting. So he's here now. You can keep the CRA meetings after. But in the future, if you have a separate attorney for a CRA meeting and you know they're shorter, put them up first. So instead of paying for five hours, may only paid for two hours, which would have saved you like $650, $700. Just to point that out. Thank you. Okay. We're okay. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Commissioners, any public comments on any of these items? Okay. If there's no further comments, uh, may I have a motion and a second to approve, please? Motion to appro approve Could consent be... agenda items six through 14. Second. Right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Yeah, roll call, Frank please. was the yeah, second. second. Yeah, roll call, Commissioner. Please. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay, let's go to the uh, special consent agenda. Item 15 is direction on request of Starwood Capital Group Savannah Co. for lease extension 10, uh, I'm giving it 10 minutes, sorry about that. Same <laughs> Angela Torres. Yes, um, see from back up, I've been talking to this group. Um, this before, before we go, yeah. before we get started, the last thing I wanted to mention on the, the uh, consent agenda is that the, um, the procession for the St. Nicholas uh, 
uh, Greek Orthodox uh, um, is May 3rd, and that would be a First Friday. I want to make sure all the residents know that First Friday has been canceled for that for that weekend, and and so that is not going to happen. Excuse me. Continue, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, back in 2024, the city entered into a 50-year lease um, for the Savannah Cove Apartments, which ended up being 160 unit. Um, off Curlew Plays behind the hospital. Um, in, uh, that went to referendum. Um, and in 2021, the Starwood Group um, took over running that apartment complex. Uh, I've been in conversation. It was probably right before the Thanksgiving, before the holidays. Um, I've been talking with them and only spending my time and city efforts talking with them because of a request they had to extend the lease. We are 20 years into a 50 year lease. Um, their request, and you see in, in, in the backup, um, they have something here. I think they're in the audience here. Um, they may want to come forward. <laughs> um, but for, but uh, their, their request is, is an extension of 20 years. Would you put it again at a 50 year lease? This is something that would have to go to referendum. This would take some work of our attorneys. Um, so what I'm asking you tonight, um, the, the backup and the, that's not the offer is going to be the cut. That's some suggestions. Um, but before I brought in and spend any re city resources on working on this, because this will be, you know, a rather extensive project for working on a negotiation, um, getting involved in the chart and stuff before I wanted to do that. Um, I wanted them to present to you their general concept. And my mission tonight is just get a feeling of this board. Is it, is it something that this board would want to entertain about a 30 years left on the lease, an extension of 20 years on that? Because if that's a basic principle that this commission would not want to go into, then there's no sense um, me and the group engaging in all that work if, if this commission's feeling is at this time with 30 years left that they would not be inclined to do a further 20 years to make it a new 50 year lease. So, so basically, um, I'm just trying to get out of you tonight. If it's something you're willing to look at and see where the negotiations and meet is a very nice group of people. We've had some very nice conversations, but again, if, if you're not inclined to commit the city for an additional 20 years to the 30 years we've got, then there's no sense of us looking you know, doing a lot of work, bringing to you a proposal on a new lease, setting the referendum item, and, and setting it to the people. So um, they, they're here. They might want to say a few words about what they said first, and then we want to get a feeling from the commission where, what direction you want to go forward. So you, uh, come forward. Please, if you have some comments. Yes, yeah, yeah. sir. Okay. Um, my name is Michelle Hayes, and I am with Highmark Residential, and I represent Starwood. So... Um, you spoke very highly and, and pretty much covered everything that we needed to say. I think what's important is that you understand that Starwood Capital is here to be a long-term owner. Um, they have, since they, they've moved their headquarters now to Miami Beach, Florida, so we are primarily here in Florida. Since we've been here, since 2015, taking over affordable housing, we have not sold any of our assets. So what we're looking to do is to be a long-term partnership with Tarpon Springs and helping the community as well as the residents of Savannah Cove um, be as healthy and happy as they can be. So at this time, we are hoping that you will allow us the opportunity for an additional 20 years on the ground lease. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any public comments on this item? You didn't have anything else, did you? You didn't have anything else. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun. Okay, before I start, uh, Ms. Annie Samarcus has kindly volunteered her time for me. So, Savannah Cove. Frank should remember this well. Yep. Now, there's a dark understory about 
this particular project, how it came about, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to get into the details here. Things you should ask yourself. Who is this coming before you? Who is it? Starwood Capital. Did you look it up? It's a private equity firm. Private equity firm. Starwood Capital Group is a private investment firm with primary focus on global real estate. Since its inception in 1991, the firm has raised over $75 billion of capital and currently has approximately $115 billion of assets under management. Over the past 32 years, Starwood Capital invested in excess $245 billion of assets, including properties within every uh, major real estate asset. The lady just mentioned High Mark, and if you go further down, one of the largest collections of multifamily apartments in the United States and an in-house multifamily property management company. That's the High Mark residential she mentioned. She says, we're here in the long term. What do private e equity firms do if you know your business? They compile assets, they squeeze the money out of it, then they resell it to someone else. Now, I would right off the bat say, thank you, but no thank you. And I'm gonna point out some things to you, but it's kind of insulting to me. Uh, and here, what they're offering the city, uh, they're going to, they said here they're going to uh, offer $100,000 to be used to be donated to the city for sister field improvements. Uh, and you'll come in at 20000 over the next five years. 20000 a year for five years, and yet I just read they have over $245 billion in assets? What are they looking at you as? Oh, yeah, we'll throw them a little bread and brother. Now, so, one, <laughs> that's pitiful. First off, to come off to treat us, but let's look at the actual contract. Contract on page six under, let's see, is it six? Rent. Where's the rent section? Here it is. Uh, so they paid a lump sum, 300,000 up front, just to be kind and gracious for us to sign a contract. And then it says commencing on rental commencement date, and continuing throughout the term, Lisey shall pay the less or fixed annual base rent in the amount of $73,500. They're only paying $73,500. That was from 2003. What has inflation done? What is that? That's like, it comes out, I think it's a $62.50 a month. So one, even if you decided to think about talking to them, one of the things got to be on the table is changing the rent. Find out from Ron how much the difference is from 2003 to 2024 for with inflation, what that is a comparable number. That should be your bottom line. Bottom line. Secondly, more importantly, page 14, ownership. Ownership. Number 7-3. Lease you shall own the project in fee simple as is built brick by brick. At all times while this lease is in force, title of the project shall belong solely to the leasee. And upon the termination or expiration of this lease, title of the project, then situated in the land, shall pass automatically to lessor without payment thereof, unless he shall have no further rights therein. In other words, in 2054, you're going to get this building. Do you want to have it be 20 years older when you get it? What kind of guarantee do you have on maintenance during that time? I don't know. That, that, this stinks worse than a skunk that got stepped on by a mule. So my suggestion at this point is you tell them thank you. We would appreciate anything you can do to support your residents that you should be doing already. She nods, yes, OK. that's politically correct in the venue in front of you. Have you polled the residents there at Savannah Cove? Have any of you gone over and talked to them about what's going on over there to know what the bottom line is? Huh? Before you go on saying, yeah, we're going to give them a real sweet deal that they can own the place for another 20 years. Are the residents happy with the new group? 
Are they making the improvements they're the saying? I don't know, guys. This don't smell good. Thank you for your time. Are there any other public comments on this item? So, I heard everything you had to say. Just if you I, could make it brief. Yes, what I want to clarify is, I actually work for Highmark Residential, and I am the regional property manager for Savannah Cove. So I am here representing Starwood, but I actually deal with the residents every single day. That is my job, is to oversee them. And they are my priority. And I can tell you, I welcome you to talk to the residents, because that is one property that is a team. The residents, the property manager, the I, services every single day, like, it, I can't speak more than what those residents do get. That I can speak for. Thank you. I, I appreciate all the comments concerning Starwood, but the issue is whether we want to add another 20 years to, an, to a 30-year lease. We, the lease is there. Starwood's operating the facility. There's nothing that we can do about it, nor would we want to do about it with a contract in place. It's as simple as that. So are there any other public comments concerning the lease extension of 20 years? Mr. Chump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kuyash, you've got your light on. Yeah, I just wanted to start off first and um, I'm not interested at this time in moving forward with an agreement. I think it would be poor planning by us as commissioners for the well-being of the city. Uh, who knows what the climate can be 20 years from now as well, and that's actually a property located next to that hospital, so I'm not sure exactly what future planning may or may not hold, but um, I don't even think this issue should be brought up for another 20 years, but I don't think we can regulate that. But, you know, so that's where I stand. I, I, I think it'd be poor planning for the residents and I don't want to put them in that spot as well. And um, uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor Eisner. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with what I just heard. I don't feel like um, extending the contract, but I did want to make a statement because I did poll the residents and, uh, you know, predominantly most of the residents are happy, but there were a couple of comments that I would like for you to address. Um, a number of, uh, it's okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't looking for an answer. This is something you could take back with you. Um, some of them were scared to talk, okay? So they didn't want to admit to anything. They felt there would be retribution. Those were some of the comments I got. Um, there were quite a number of comments about windows that were either fogged um, or of no use. And when they put in a complaint, it goes it falls on deaf ears. So these were some of the things that I heard um, when I did do the polling. Um, there was a couple of issues with um, pest control companies coming in and saying the house wasn't clean and that's why there was issues. I ran an international pest control company. I know that's something people use because they can't control the issue, so they put the blame on the person when it's sometimes you just don't know what they're utilizing. But sometimes it is also the person doesn't keep a clean house. Neither, neither side wants to admit it, so I've seen both sides. But these are um, bad comments to be made. Um, there were a number of people that said they would never move in here, and there were a number of people that said, it was the greatest place ever. So, you know, uh, I'm not looking to push ahead 20 years, 30 years. I think right now is a decent time. Um, I, I also will be honest to tell you, I don't take kindly to offers of $100,000 to, to extend the contract. Um, I would rather you see you put it into the uh, affordable housing and making sure that they're living better, whether it's upgrading a, 
an air conditioner or a heating facility, whatever. We don't need, us as LaField is fine and dandy. And, you know, just to let you know personally, that hurt me more than helped me. So um, I'm, I'm just being honest in, in how I read your offer. But I would go after trying to please those people that are not pleased right now. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Commissioner Koulianis. Yeah, I, I didn't, I haven't heard any where there's any significant benefit to the city of Tarpon Springs to extend this 20 extra years. The 100,000 is insignificant. It doesn't, it, it doesn't move me. Um, and like uh, former Commissioner Delacus uh, alluded to, you know, before we'd even consider something like this, um, we'd have to re-examine the value of the property, the rent. Um, again, this original lease was in 2003. Um, what's our return on investment? You know, so I, I think all that's premature. I, I just don't see, a, I, and I can, it, it seems from the comments so far that, that it's not something that we're willing to entertain at this moment. Um, but again, I don't see the, the facts that are brought before us. I understand that you would examine more of that in, in any deliberations you do, but I haven't heard anything in, in, in these discussions that is, creates any significant benefit for the city to worry about something 30 years from now to kick it 20 extra years. I, unless, unless there was significant financial advantage to the town, um, but again, I haven't seen that because we're really not renegotiating this lease to bring it up to um, current values. Um, so I, I, I would have to go along with my two colleagues on this. Okay. Commissioner DiDonato. I just have some questions. I, I, I too, I'm not, I'm not sure that the $100,000, we don't, we don't have numbers that we could even work with right now. Uh, that's one. And two, does the Little League, they, do they have plans to use that money? If they, I mean, have they been approached? Well, yeah, that, go ahead. that's what I wanted to talk yeah, about because yeah. everybody's talking about, I, I want you to realize we haven't gone into negotiations yet. The off, the, the amenities you see, on, when we were talking about, there's a lot of things to negotiate. If we were said to go forward and negotiate, the lease, what, all the things you've talked about that would be in there. What I had asked of them, was there anything above and beyond so, so that, that they had to offer? This was something... This is not a deal. This is not something. This was just something they mentioned above and beyond what we have to look at about the lease price, the where it goes, all the different things. So, so this is not something they're throwing out. This is this is just when we were talking, you know, something above and beyond what we'd be looking. At, we'd be looking at what everybody was talking about as far as the contract, uh, maybe some some more security and the other things. And so, so that's not just the hey, do this and we'll give you this. This was above and beyond the normal lease negotiations that we do for the city. So I just want, I just want to let you know and stuff that this was, this is the reason they put that in. It's not, it's not, this is all they were given or something. This was just a little above and beyond. So I just want everybody to realize that that's not the deal. We're, we haven't even got into the deal yet about what we go over all the factors. Um, this was just something, you know, do you have any ideas what you would do to the community, with the community above and beyond? Because they do do some things now they mentioned about the field trips, but they do it in-house. It would be something above and beyond the contract that you would do for the community. That was just one item they suggested, not a definitive thing, because they said, you know, anything else you want. So, so don't pin or blame them down on that, that that's just an offer thrown out there. Um, that was just the something in the discussions we did, and nowhere, you know, that's not the only thing that would happen if we were to negotiate the lease. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Dita, not um, I just, there's just... I'm, I'm not opposed. I think affordable housing certainly is always needed. It's just that a lot of facts that I don't have right now. I, I, I uh, would feel better if I knew more of the numbers, Mark. I, I, I hate to bring work, but I don't know how we can answer this if, if we don't really have the meat to, to deal with. Okay. Did you have some more, something else? Your light's on. Okay. Um, I, I, I just I don't want to think of it as a numbers game I just want to think about it as planning for the city it's the way the property situated and nearby the hospital I, I don't know what 
the layouts of the city is going to be, density 20 years from now, a lot of things can change and happen. And uh, I do want to be clear, I lived in Savannah Cove up until December 2019. And so it, it was a great neighborhood. It was a senior, a senior citizen neighborhood at the time, and a small percentage of people can live in there that are not, which I was. And so uh, it, it was a good neighborhood. It, it was affordable. And um, I, I do know it as a good neighborhood. But for planning-wise, uh, putting the residents in a spot and where it's situated and its potential towards the city, uh, I don't think we should support it. And hopefully this gets discussed 20 years from now a long time from now for a future board to come up with this, with this decision. Okay. Thank you. I, I think uh, for Starwood, what you've heard here is a, is, is a lot of things, but they all point to the same thing. This commission, not just for your request, but for many of the other requests, ordinances, things, we've been reeling in the horizon, the decision horizons on stuff. We've been making things much shorter than what they've originally we've given development rights for 10 years, we've reeled those back into something much shorter than that. So it's just been a trend with this commission to do that. And, and I think I wouldn't read anything more than that into what you heard tonight. I think the commission's somewhat um, uh, more comfortable with leaving it, not tying the hands of future commissions to, to deal with anything that might come up. So um, if there's no further comments, what I would like to do, because we have to do things in the affirmative, is to authorize the city manager to move forward with uh, lease extension negotiation. If you're not for it, vote no. If you're for it, vote yes. So may I have a motion and a second to that effect? So moved. Second. Okay. If there's no further comments, roll call. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? No. Commissioner Koulias? No. Vice Mayor Eisner? No. Mayor Batikiotis? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item is the um, approved purchase. I'm sorry, it's increased file number 230139, electrical instrumentation control services. Uh, City Manager, of course, who's, who's got that? Is that yours, Tom? Tommy Kiger? Okay. Thomas Kiger, Public Services Director. Uh, thank you, Mayor Viticiotis and members of the board. Uh, today we have a relatively simple item. Um, this is to procure the services to implement a large cybersecurity project for the water and wastewater utilities. As uh, many of you know and have seen in the news and things like that, um, you know, we're entering into a new sort of threat environment uh, for cybersecurity kind of globally and particularly related to critical infrastructure. Uh, in response to that, the EPA and um, Homeland Security and NIST, several large federal agencies have issued new cybersecurity guidance. Uh, the city has been very proactive in trying to address these concerns, and uh, we've done internal cybersecurity audits. We have a cybersecurity and electrical master plan for the utility, and uh, we've been collaborating with uh, Suzanne Linton in IT and all of her staff as well. And uh, what this is, is just a one-time uh, contract authorization to um, uh, make him and create our current uh, electrical and instrumentation contractor that's already doing work for the city to implement this project uh, to ensure that um, things are being done to standard and also to ensure the city's getting uh, the best value. Well, we've also uh, contracted recently with Tetra Tech to provide third-party review services to make sure that everything's up to standard and that we're also getting good uh, fair pricing and that everything's reasonable. They've reviewed this proposal in detail and found it to be A, adequate to meet the national standards and also uh, fair and reasonable from a pricing standpoint. And uh, the good news is, is this project was originally budgeted at $1.4 million and there's $700,000 in ARPA funding that's been previously dedicated to this project. The current proposal is just over $1.2 million, and we're asking for a very small contingency to bring it to about $1.28 million. Uh, and that contingency is only applied to the hardware and sort of implementation uh, component of the project. And the design fees and the professional services, there's no contingency applied. Um, we've already had some preliminary discussions with some of you uh, regarding the details of the project. Uh, because of the sensitive nature of cybersecurity, particularly around critical infrastructure, we're Love to answer any questions you have related to the, how the project might be implemented and the procurement and the funding thereof, but we would ask to not ask any detailed questions about networks or our cybersecurity, um, uh, you know, 
details at this time. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kiger. Let me go to public comments first. Uh, are there any public comments on this item? Uh, Craig Lunt, 743 Chesapeake Drive. Um, one comment I have is when I looked at this, um, with limited information because of the protected information, what I'm seeing is a $1.4 million ask that was a year ago go up to a $2.3 million ask, which is a pretty big raise in over a year, depending on what NIST has done and so forth, which I'm pretty familiar with. Um, so that's, that's comment number one. Uh, comment number two is, at the present time, you can discuss particulars with almost anybody because the regulation that restricts access to this kind of information has been formally sunsetted in October. And it hasn't been signed again by our governor, but so you need to be aware of that in case you get a public record <coughs> requests in, in that amount. But uh, I, I'd be really concerned that this seems to be spiraling up and up and up. I'm pretty familiar with the cybersecurity area. None of my other clients have seen 30% increases in a year. Thank you. Um, go ahead. I'd be happy to address that. Um, it, it seems to be a little bit confused with the, uh, the backup. So we do have an annual spending authorization that we maintain with our electrical and cybersecurity, uh, our electrical and instrumentation and controls uh, contractor for you know sort of annual maintenance and integrating new instruments and pumps and things like that. The normal annual operating costs of operating our networks. Uh, this is a one-time increase of 1.28 to cover this project. And the rest of the pre-existing authorization is our five-year spending plan for, you know, sort of general uh, other <coughs> projects and things like that and annual operations and that sort of thing. So the cost of the project was original of this particular project was originally budgeted at 1.4 the spending authorization, the increase that we're asking for today to this contract is a one-time spending authorization for the project is $1.28 million. And we're expecting it to be a lot closer to 1.2, but we do want to allow a little bit of contingency. So we are going to be under budget on this, but it's, it can be a little bit tricky to see that with how the contract's structured. Let me go back to public comments. Are there any other public comments? Uh, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, City Manager, of course, you want to add anything to what Mr. Kiger said? No. Okay, okay. Commissioner, comments, anybody? We're all okay with it. Okay. Pardon me? We discussed this already. Yeah, okay. Um, if there's no further public, I'm sorry, commission comments, this is for item 16. If we could have a motion to approve and a second, please. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call. Commissioner D. Donato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Kouyas? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vadikiotis? Yes. Okay, um, item 17 is proof purchase for zero Lincoln Avenue. It's the corner of Mears and Lincoln. Actually, it's the corner of... Um, uh, northeast uh, Lincoln and Mears, uh, City Manager Course. Again, I guess it's appropriate for tonight um, with sustainability and earth and everything that probably one of the most important environmental purchases right up there with the Ross property on Florida Avenue is, is gaining this land. We talked about this when um, we moved forward with our due diligence about the importance to our environment our watershed and all the evidence presented to it. Um, we did hit a good timing process with appraisers and environmental studies. This was anticipated to take maybe up to two months and there's a lot less. So I'm bringing this back to you a little early because we've got the two appraisals. Um, there was an agreement with the price that if this if this land fell outside the 125% of the appraised value that, that we could open the price for negotiation, it came in at 118, the average of two appraisals. So, so the price met the requirements. Um, the due diligence on the phase one environmental um, passed. So we've done all our due diligence and we're ready per what the contract says for your final approval 
um, to purchase this land. Hopefully, after tonight, we'll start tomorrow and Mr. Salzman can get it closed, hopefully by the beginning of May. And we've already got our people looking at the steps we need to immediately take um, to improve the water quality in that area. With Again, it's a major area in the middle of town um, for our water thing. We're, we're already ready to start with our engineers and stuff um, to move immediately on the project. Um, again, it's, it's one of the most important environmental pieces we could acquire. We required under the amount for referendum. So <coughs> this, along with the work we're beginning on the Ross property, Two parts of town, we're doing some good work for stormwater and the environment and have bought the properties um, in that case. So, so I'm bringing this forward for your final approval for the contract and we'll begin the closing process, closing process to obtain this land tomorrow if you approve in the affirmative. Okay, uh, the size of the property, um, the size of the property, how, how large is it for, um, the, for the residents? It's 1.5, I think 1.5. 1.5 acres? Yeah, that's what I saw today. I think I th somewhere around there, 1.5 acres. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's 1.5 acres, which will be preservation and water quality improvements. Uh, mm -hmm. It's already a wetland, yeah. and uh, but it's a key, pe key wetland because a lot of the runoff comes down mirrors to that location. So if you remember, before the Icaria mm -hmm. apartments, that whole area was a wetland yes. and, and with fish and everything else. I suspect there may be fish in that one too. So, okay, um, let's go to public comments. Are there any public comments on this? Mr. Lackis, no? Okay. Um, Mr. Jump, any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, I may have been premature. Let me ask again, are there any public comments from anyone in the audience here? Okay. Um, City Commission, any comments? Um, give us the price as well, City Manager, of course. $345,000. Okay, the sale price is $345,000. Um, there was, uh, we, the way it works is 125%, but I think it was 128% that it came out with the two averages. Is that right? 18, uh, 118%. 118%, so that's within the 128 based on the average. And um, so I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity and I'm all for it. Um, if there's no further comments, may I have a, um, a motion to approve and a second authorizing the city manager to proceed with the purchase of the property. So mm -hmm. moved. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay. Uh, next item is award uh, file number 240108. This is um, resurfacing the Riverside tennis courts uh, utilizing the existing source well contract city manager of course yes i'm have tom function has been working very hard on this issue of the riverside courts and the the best way to proceed with it um so tom i'll turn it over to you to to present uh, what you're presenting to the board to approve for those courts okay uh excuse me a minute while i get this straightened away here i don't know how to take this piece off over here oh, i apologize but we're all learning this new agenda management system. Yeah, I'm learning this up. Uh, bear with me for a second, please. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably need some tech help. No, we we are work, we are having problems with the. It takes a while to load. I'm already. So we are working on the. Load, it'll it'll load, but it, well, I'll, I'll, I'll it, touch it takes base, a bit. I'll touch base on a couple okay. of things while we're waiting for this to load up over here. Of course, I'm asking to award a contract for two cool courts for uh, the amount of $250,000 to replace the, uh, to resurface the actually tennis courts out at Riverside Field. Uh, I've been looking into that. Here we go. Oh, we're going over here. Um, we had originally gone, thought about replacing the tennis courts out there this, this fall uh, and put it out to bid. And when the prices come in for complete rebuild on the tennis courts, they come in at a ridiculous amount of money, a little over $550,000. Uh, so I had to come up with another way. 
No, I'm just telling them it, it's doing like we, we already know the problem. It's, it's not a problem with thing. It's just a problem uh, within comes. Civic Plus. The, um, I don't think you want to go to the agenda there. You want to go to particular backup. Yeah. I do agenda backup packet. That's the best. Click on agenda packet. That's what. Again, it's been doing this all day, so we've been working on these. Thank you. Sorry Just stand there one second. Yes. Stand there. For everybody that doesn't know who Mr. Jump is, when I ask Mr. Jump, that's Mark Jump. He's up in our technical booth. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I, I appreciate that. Sorry about that. Riverside, Riverside Tennis Court replacement, uh, again, is you have three options. Remove fence and relate all court material down to subgrade, resurface existing courts, or use existing courts and cover with a versa court. Those are the three options we, we looked at. Uh, remove and install the subsurface. Again, as we put this out to bid, and that's complete demolition of the subsurface, six to eight weeks. Uh, we require, may require a swift mud permitting in case we have stormwater issues. Possible additional cost if stormwater is needed. We'll need to remove and replace fence this option. That's 550,000 plus. That does not include any type of stormwater. Uh, another resurface would be to resurface existing courts. With the regular resurfaces, they come in, they fill cracks in, they restripe it, put it back together again, uh, and look like the courts are right now, for the most part. They're $150,000, uh, but it's not gonna last very long. You get about five years out of these surfaces. Uh, the sub base, once you can seal it and put a court over top of the existing course, those cracks that are there now will work its way back up. And in five years down the road, you're pretty much in the same condition you are now. Uh, Versa court, which I've done quite a bit of studying on this, uh, multiple different types of courts. Uh, actually, just is a, there's a plastic court, and I can hand some of these, these samples out if you guys want to look at them. That's actually what goes down? That's what goes down, yes. It's a large... The size uh, and everything. That size. And they, they clip together and sit on the existing surface. A little minor sub uh, work we'll have to do, fill some cracks and things like that. Uh, but I'll get down to the, the, the benefit of this type of court. Uh, as you see, these are the courts right here. Uh, the left, of course, is a ten mostly tennis courts. And this is what the court looks like when they're completed. Uh, it takes only a couple of days to do this too, so it doesn't take long to put this court down. Uh, as you can see, we can utilize the same fencing that's there. We can utilize uh, the same nets, so the minimal amount of time of the court actually being uh, down for not play is probably only maybe less than a week. Uh, and as you see down the bottom right-hand corner, that's how it goes together. It comes in a, in a kit, and they just take it apart and snap it all together. Uh, Here's some photos of our existing court. And as you can see, the cracks there. And you can actually see one of the cracks up in the right-hand corner where you get some sand starting to protrude up through the, uh, the cracks. Uh, that's something we would do in-house and seal them off if you approve this uh, before we put the Versa court on. But uh, if you decide just to recover it, those cracks will eventually uh, uh, break up to any other type of surface you put on here. So they reflect through, just like uh, paving. Uh, this is the four options. Uh, of course, the option up on the left is what it would look like under construction. Uh, on the right would be just the other type of resurfacing the top of it. And down the bottom is where they put the, the uh, pieces together. What I show you on the left-hand side of here is whether you go uh, a, new, a brand new court, reconstruct it, whether just surface it, <clears throat> or even put a versa court, uh, asphalt or uh, concrete, whichever you're using, they're not perfect materials. And after any type of rain, you always have little puddles and stuff. One of the other beauties of this uh, material I come to find out is that once it stops raining, most of those little water, that puddles that sit there are below the Versa court. So you can almost play on this court literally minutes after it finished raining. <clears throat> Here's the choices. Complete, new, expensive, expensive. Minimum $550 and could be more if stormwater is required. Uh, resurfacing expense, of course, and we talked about this before, will require eventual full court replacement. Existing cracks can be filled and covered, but will eventually reflect through. 
uh, may be acceptable for about five years. And fencing can be replaced in the future. That's one of the things we would have to do with this regular resurfacing. On the Versa Court, it's 250 to 55,000. Uh, it's actually a little bit less than that, 250,000. Can be striped for both tennis and pickleball, so you can make it an automatic uh, dual use court. Can play it after rain because of the open grid design. It's 50% cooler than playing on asphalt. Uh, the Versa Court tile systems are ideal for creating a fast surface without. Uh, uh, related, uh, so fast serving clay without related pain and injury risk associated with typical hard courts. It, it does give a very little bit, not enough for the changes to play, but it does give. Uh, with the flex, slight vertical flex, uh, with the side to side movement, uh, and I'll get to this a little bit later on about that. I did talk to somebody about who played on this. Uh, these, these courts have been uh, tested and rated by the International Tennis Federation as a fast-paced service for recreational and competitive play, so it doesn't affect the play of this whatsoever. That's pretty much a quick overview. I, I got a little backup on this, too. I've done a lot of, I went down to uh, Bradenton and looked at a few tennis courts down there that have been in there about 10 or 15 years, and I was pleasantly surprised how well they held up. Uh, and then about three weeks ago, Brandon Crum, my facility superintendent, and I both went out to Lakeland where this first court went down a couple of months ago. Uh, talked with the uh, director out there, and they were very, very pleased with the product. But when we went out to the course, we saw some people out there playing, and one of the interesting uh, responses I got was a gentleman goes out there a couple days a week, and this was on the basketball court, and uh, he said, since the court's won, he goes out every day and plays, where he, before, he was in his early 60s, much like I am, uh, he could play, but take a couple of days off before he could play again. And this actually extended his time on the courts because uh, now he doesn't have the sore knees or sore hips or joints. Now, it's not scientific, but it was, it's, it's uh, uh, somewhere directly onto it. One of the other beauties about this is it's got an excellent warranty on this. Uh, the first five years is 100% warranty on it. Uh, of course, unless you drop trees on it and break it, you'll have to pay for it. Uh, and then a warranty goes on for almost 30 years. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It gives us a 30-day warranty, too. In 30 days, we don't like it. We can tell them to take it out. We have to pay for the shipping back, but uh, we wouldn't like it. Uh, it's been using, being used all over the country. Uh, I'm, it's big in Georgia now, South Carolina. Uh, colleges, uh, you go online, I, 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 people go online, take a look at this and see how many colleges are actually putting this in. Uh, we can do different color courts, and I'll actually go back up this other pipe over here, which is pretty neat. Uh, the courts next to each other can be different colors. Uh, even if you look at it, if you decide you want to put the, the pickleball on there, uh, it's, it's not overwhelming. We can also put uh, any type of uh, city seal on there. If you want to put a city seal, uh, it gets a lot of options doing it down. This whole court will take us less than a week to replace and back up in, in uh, time. So that's the biggest advantage besides the saving of about a quarter of a million dollars, which I think is really pretty important. Okay, let me, uh, before we go to public comments, let me just ask a question for clarification. Um, uh, the pickleball court striping, is that something we have to decide tonight? No, no. No, when we're ready to order, no, we can sit down no. and discuss it, it. What are we authorizing just to... It, it, tonight, you'd be authorizing which, which way to go on it, which, of course, we're recommending this permacourt. Um, but while we're at it, the, the news is we've, we've finally, we've been working very long um, with our design team um, to do the specs um, for the prospects of the pickleball. The, the, the challenges have been the cost and designing it so hopefully we can get the maximum out of it. Um, we, have, we have got the specs down to I think the best way that we can get a bid for it. So those bids are going out and hopefully in May we'll be bringing back probably with the change of the meetings, it'll probably be the second one in May, but we should be bringing back the prospects and prices for two, three and four courts for the pickleball courts, uh, the final, the quotes to approve and start doing those. And again, hopefully the hard work we've done on the specs and what we're putting out to bid is gonna keep that price down so we can do do the higher number of courts instead of the two. Right. It was a long process and, you know, we still got to go out to bid and we got to see if all the work we did got those prices down and still have a quality project. But hopefully, hopefully by May, then we'll have the decision and, and award the bid um, to build those pickleball courts. Um, I'm going to go to that, but as far as um, we authorize this tonight mm -hmm. and then, um, do you come back with decision points or is this something as far as the striping? I, I, honestly, I, I'm not, the seal is, 
a little bit of a holy grail to me. I don't particularly think we need no. to have that on the ground. Tom just likes to, like to embellish a little bit on it. Okay. The biggest thing is getting the court down. The other things we could do, that doesn't have to be done when we install it. Am I correct? Well, the striping, and, the striping it, comes with yeah. it. It's, it's actually made in a factory altogether. But we don't have to. But we don't have to do that. No, you know, it's yeah. a, your choice. We can but, come back later on. I can bring we, back. Well, I can bring back color options and. You know, and our and choices striping. is not because I don't want to get into the feud of the, you know, especially since we're coming close to building the courts. I don't. Right. I don't think we want to get. In. I think we want the priority that we've been looking for for a longer time than we want is is the tennis course and the reserve center Riverside. And that's what I'd like to stick to, despite all the other good aspects of this that was brought into it. I want to stick to those tennis courts and reserve it. Those other decisions made, if we start going to multi purposes, if something happens with a bid, those are decisions we can make later. Okay. But I like right. that we've been working on these courts on Riverside for tennis courts for a while and mm -hmm. the resurfacing problems and the amount of money to redo them and stuff. So, so that's what hopefully I'd like to deal with tonight. Okay, let me go to uh, public comments and we'll come back to the commission for questions. Uh, public comments, any public comments on this one? Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. What is the surface of the tennis courts at Craig Park? Are they going to have to be resurfaced again soon? Do you want me to answer that? What's the condition? Uh, let her fit, usually you have to make the comments and then mm -hmm. the mayor wants you. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking if it's not that expensive, could we, and they need to be resurfaced, can that be brought in also? Mm -hmm. And what is the status on the shuffleboard? The people are going back up north pretty soon and the roof hasn't been replaced, it has stripes haven't been painted, and it's been three years, four years now we've been, they've been asking about it. So I don't know where we're on that, but the tennis courts at Craig Park, what condition are they in? Go ahead, Tom, and answer okay. that. No problem. Craig Park's probably about three years away, four years away for needs of replacement. Okay, it's that's all because it's heavily used. Mm -hmm. Yes. All day, because I'm down. I walked down there twice a day, and I was wondering. Well, we're growing, and we're going to need more courts in the next 30 years. Thank you. Are there any more public comments? Good evening, Katie Taylor, 1991 Douglas Lane, Tarpon Springs. I was in the Parks and Rec meeting the other day, and I know they kind of leaning toward that verse court. Yes. You you mentioned about. Um, that when you play the actual game, yes. that square, it's not gonna affect the placement of the balls, right? It doesn't affect the, when you hit the ball on the surface. No, ma'am, it, it, it's, it's approved by the Feder Tennis Federation. They use it for competitive play, so yes. I play with my cousin Serena, so I'm gonna check it out. Please, um, <laughs> tell them to call me. <laughs> the other thing, uh, with, with, the, um, with the environment down here in Florida, mm -hmm. you know, we have beautiful weather, but we also have like, a, uh, the desert with 110 degree weather, mm -hmm. and as well as floods. So how will it affect that court when we have 110 degree weather? It is absolutely fine. Uh, I saw our courts down in Bradenton over here, almost 15 years old. There was some minor fading to it, but the new product is even better. Uh, so no, that holds up pretty, very well, extremely well. In the well. storms, it, it'll... Yes, ma'am. It don't buckle, buckle enough. No, ma'am, not whatsoever. It, it, it gives, it, it, it moves with it, so. Okay, we'll never you. feel the movement, but it does. Flex. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Hi, Craig Lunt, 743 Chesapeake. Um, this is just actually a, a general comment. As I started thinking about this today, I realized that we have a Parks and Recreation Board, except Sitting on the commission, you never hear anything from the Parks and Recreation Board. If you take a look at the events calendar, there's nothing from the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, I think with the amount of money that we're starting to put into Parks and Recreation in the city of Tarpon Springs, that if we have an advisory board, they should be doing their job and we should be hearing from them. And that's just not happening. And that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. I did bring this from the Recreation Board. They saw it the other day, and they leaning towards this progress, process. Right. Well, yeah, we'll get to com uh, commission comments in a minute. Are there, thank you for your comments, uh, Craig. Um, are there any other commission, I'm sorry, any other public comments? 
Um, Mr. Chump, any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Eisner, you've got your light on. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I don't play tennis, as uh, also Commissioner Kulas has said as well. And uh, But I did, my cousin is on the Riverside Courts every day. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give him a shout out. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate. He got me a lot of feedback on these courts. Mm -hmm. um, it is good for seniors. It does cause less injuries. Mm -hmm. um, the surface, from what I understand, is sometimes erratic. And that comes back to what Ms. Taylor said as well. Because if these are not fully flush, you can get either a dead sound or too solid a sound. Um, and it's just very common. It's not terrible, but it is, it's, it's equivalent to what they call for a clay court. In a clay court, you could get some erratic balls. I don't think we have professional tennis players here, so I think this will be fine. I'm not knocking it by any means. I'm just giving the fine details mm -hmm. of the pros and cons. Um, Long-term maintenance, these are great. You mm -hmm. just pop out a piece and put it in in two seconds, and, you know, it, it's not a problem. What concerns me the biggest is kids are on there with bicycles. This product and bicycle skids are horrible. Um, and that's something that we, if we're going to invest this, uh, we got to be very careful about that. We have dogs that go on there. Yeah, you could play on it after water, mm -hmm. but when you have dogs on there doing their thing, you're not going to be playing on it right away. Um, so those were some of the concerns that I had. And the one biggest concern was there's no record of yeah, it's great for your knees and hips and uh, because it flexes, so you're not, it's not an abrupt stop. But if you fall on that, oh my God, you're going to be looking for some bandages because it's very rough. Um, I felt it and, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's not good to fall on something smooth, but this is going to be even rougher and I don't know about that. I'm still in favor of doing it. Um, I, I don't know if I'd want to see it on you know, down in the Spring Bayou and the other courts yet. I, I think we need to get a little bit of familiarity and do our own research on it. Overall, I like it. It's just, I just don't know, you know, what the issues could be as far as falling or skidding on it, uh, you know, catching your face on it. I mean, it's rough. Um, so I know it's also, I, I will tell you this, it's also a faster game. Yes. Um, the tennis balls tend to be a little quicker, um, and I have no idea. Uh, I think the pickleball is a plastic ball, and that thing's got to come like a rocket ship at you if you're going to play on this, because it's plastic <coughs> on plastic. So that's I, all I really wanted to say. If you'd like me to speak to a couple of those points, I can. Sure. Sure. When I when some of the uh, installation, basically, even out in uh, Lakeland over here, what we found out was that you were right, right about some weird spots on their soft. Well, they didn't prep their court before they did it. Uh, that's kind of new. One of the beauties about that court out there is actually still in pretty good shape. There's no, there's no low spots. It doesn't puddle very much over there whatsoever. Uh, the only thing I really got to do is just fill some cracks uh, so we don't get weeds growing up through. And that's one of the other shoes that they that yes. some some places have not done that. So done a little bit of diligence on that. So that's pretty good. As far as falling on it, I play pickleball. Uh, you ever fall on pickleball? I don't care if I'm falling on pickleball or if I'm falling on, uh, it hurts <laughs> either way. Uh, but from what I understand from just talking to people that have played on it, they were very, very pleased with it, especially the older people like, like myself. Joints and all get a little tough over here. So that's, I'm going by real life experience that I'm getting from this over here. So yeah, I mean, again, it's, it, and, and it's, it, this can be moved. Uh, it can be picked up and reused again someplace else if you like to. No, overall, uh, I like it. That's the beauty about yeah. it. That's some of the beauties about that. It is portable. So if we decide one day, God forbid, we're going to redo tennis, we can take it and move it to another tennis court. So They use these a lot of times in uh, people's private garages to drive yeah. on. You know, it's, it's, it's a great product, and it is, you know, reusable anywhere. 
it's replaceable. Yeah. So I, I love the lifetime, you know, warranty on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm for it, but. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Curias. Yes, I just wanted to ask, uh, Mr. Funchen, we talked about if, if we do the resurface approach that potentially in about five years, we'll have to do it again. Yes. Um, with the VersaCore, uh, wouldn't we have to come across any similar situation with the underneath surface maybe in five years? Is there, because we're sealing it off? I'm just curious about that part because we're putting on top of the well, that's one that, that we could possibly resurface. Well, we still have to do some crack repair on it before we put this down. That's exactly what I would do. Is that possible? Yes, but if you have a spot area that's bad, you can take up a small section of the court and do a spot repair. You don't have to do a whole repair on it. If I go out there and put a whole new deck down, take the existing deck off and off, I'm going to have to get a Swift Mud uh, a waiver on that if they give us one. And that price of reconstructing it goes way up. Could I put the other surface on? Yeah, I could put it, go back and do a little bit of save money in the beginning, but you'll be back in five years, I guarantee you, looking to, uh, to either reseal or take it back up again or even go this course here. So I hate to see spend, uh, you know, bad money after, no, good money after bad no, no, money. You're right. Um, One first... of the other things I haven't touched on, if you don't mind me uh, oh, touch sure. over here, this is also recyclable. We're using the $10,000 of a recycle grant, so it's not coming out of the general fund. That's, right. a, that's a big plus, too. Um, the maintenance seems like, you know, there could be some spots, you know, a couple squares you replace a year uh, and with the flexibility. Uh, um, would this board, th this board has to make a decision to, to put them on all four courts at Riverside? Could we do an experiment, maybe half the courts and see how that came out or? Yeah. You could, you want to, I, I'd rather lock it in on all four. I mean, that's an option we can put in. I can talk to the, uh, the uh, to, to them and ask them what they feel about it. I know that the, It'll all lock in better on a whole forum over here, but mm -hmm. if... And uh, as far as... It's not going to come at the same price. It's going to be a little bit more if you break it up. If you yeah, that's, half no, an thank, half thank you for bringing that up, too. And as far as pickleball, I mean, the, the residents really want to try to keep it a, a tennis court area. Um, I, I would only possibly support pickleball lines on one of those tennis courts mixed in with it, not all four. You know, and, and I think you could get maybe yeah. two to three courts on one of those tennis courts interlined together. What do you think, sir? No, the, t the pickleball courts would stay in the same uh, vicinity as where the tennis courts were. You couldn't, if you put too many lines on there because you're trying to extend extra courts on it, uh, you would have to need the extra fencing and it would get very confusing. So I would not recommend that whatsoever. So the now, I also recommend, to be honest with you, I've, you know, I've done a lot of research on this. It's great for tennis. It's actually great for basketball. Pickleball, the, the reviews on the pickleball on it are not that not great. Good. So. Okay, that's good. You, it's not good. Yeah. All right, just because that was in the backup. I mean, guys, uh, I I have mixed feelings about it. I'm willing to see how it goes. I just, uh, you know, uh, as we talk about, I, I feel for the seniors, but uh, I just want to make sure that the game is still quality game for the mm -hmm. tennis players. So um, just see what direction this board wants to go. Sure, the only thing I would add to what's been said, it, 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 there are two features that no one's talked about yet. One of them is the drainage. Uh, we get constant showers in the summertime, and, and having played tennis on those courts, I can tell you that if you want to play, you want to play, and sometimes you go out there and playing when it's wet, and you shouldn't. So the doctor in me says, I like that aspect because the drainage is going to be there and be safer from that aspect. Also, the fact that the heat is 50% less. We're talking about hotter summers. Mm -hmm. um, I think those two factors alone say we probably should give it a whirl. And I, I don't think we should do it for all courts right now until we get some kind of track record. But it does have a track record, as you've stated yes. thus far. And it is replaceable and would be low, lower maintenance. Uh, I, I think it should be a, a, a good project. OK, thanks. Commissioner Kulianis, you got anything? The um, so the like s slipping if it is wet and it's plastic d does it does it slip? Not what I've seen. Uh, I haven't done much of it myself over here, and the re reports have gone and says no. It's actually traction is excellent on it. Uh, so. Okay. Not that I know about. Water's supposed to filter underneath, actually. So yeah. it's like a, 
it should dry up way faster than it would on, on this, like, we, like we have now. Commissioner Giannato, have you played on this? I've seen similar stuff. I have not played tennis on it. Okay. But I've, I've seen similar courts. So um, what are, like, vandalism? Could these pieces be clipped out and, and taken? Oh, I'm sure they could be, yes. They could be. Okay. So we could end up losing a big chunk of the court if some vandals decide they want to start popping these pieces out. Right, so um, it's something to think about. I, I mean, I like the idea of testing it, putting it on one or, or two of the courts, and, and then seeing what the play is. Um, I mean, I, I go by there literally every day, and, mm -hmm. and five days a week I run right by it. I interact with the tennis players. Um, there is always, always at least two pickleball players, uh, mm -hmm. two pickleball players on that court all the time and they go out and they take their chalk and they make themselves a temporary space um, so I definitely would want uh, two of the four courts to have alternate striping it doesn't take away from the game for the tennis players they don't it's, it's not a big deal um, but it gives and and those people regardless of whether we build t uh, pickleball courts out off of, uh, uh, you know, out by the dog park. Mm -hmm. um, those people live in that neighborhood and walk there to play pickleball. Mm -hmm. So it's always being used by pickleball players. So I would, I would want at least two of the four to have alternative striping. Because you can't stripe, you can't go out there with your chalk on this stuff. No. So they're gonna be stuck mm -hmm. and, and not be able to play or to have to do something to try to rig it up so they could uh, at least have something, some kind of line. So we definitely, and especially if we're, if it has to be done at pre-order, then we have to make that decision yep. if we order this. But I like the idea of testing it out and uh, not going with all four courts, seeing how it plays, mm -hmm. you know, getting some feedback from the, from the, uh, from the residents that are on the court and, and such. But I like the idea. Thank you. Sure. Welcome. Um, Mr. Funchen, it, it, this is an existing contract anyway, so we, we're not really signing anything other than more of a work order to get it done when the when the decision's made. Yes. And so uh, the rec advisory committee was mentioned a couple of times tonight. So I would imagine that I would I would appreciate passing the idea of the combined pickleball and the um, um, uh, tennis courts by right. them and seeing what their recommendation is going to be. I think that's what maybe you had in mind as well between now and the time we actually do the work. They're going to come back or I, I'm not sure that's I, the process. I'm, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, tonight you're asking us well, to move ahead, right? Yeah, I was asking, I was trying to keep that pickleball, all those issues out for a lot of different decisions, but um, obviously we're asking tonight to do the four courts because... What? to do half or something. Now, if you wanted to make a decision, you know, if you want to make a decision tonight to, to do it, if we want to wait further, um, I don't know. What, what was your report from the, pick, from the, from the uh, rec advisory board when you brought it before them? Because it was they were, brought they were before the board. It. They were positive about it. Now, I can go back. But that's that. for the surface yeah. of the court. That the only issue done with them and discussed with them at their meeting that's what I want this board to know. It, it's been discussed at that meeting, and yes. the discussion was just the surface in the court, mm -hmm. not the issue of, which is, again, a, a big issue. Um, it's not a simple issue oh, um, that we're talking about here. The, the dual court for the regular purposes, remember we talked about, you know, our comp plan and our deficiency of tennis courts and the multi-purpose. You know, there's, there's so many factors we've been looking at all these years. Um, I mean, we can bring it into this process. We were hoping to ask for doing these four courts with the service that we requested. Obviously, you could move to uh, do something later with them and stuff. So that's what we're asking. Then the decision would have to be made if you want to do one or two with the lines for the pickleball if you're going to do it. If we want to go back and and would take another month or more and get the year we're, we're delaying it but obviously if that's what the board wants on this is this has been going on a long time so what why don't we think about doing um two of the courts 
out of the four, leaving two for the possibility of chalking them for pickleball and seeing how that goes, get with the rec department to make some kind of decision. Obviously, I don't think we're gonna do pickleball court lining on all four courts, um, but I, I, I think that might be the smart thing to do. And if, if the players actually provide some negative feedback, we'll know what to do with the others. And I, I, I don't know that, uh, I mean, that's what I'm hearing from the commission right now. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but let, let me hear, well, I, let me just hear, go down the line. Uh, Vice Mayor Eisner, do you want to do all four? Two? I, I want to do all four, and let me explain to you why. I dealt with floating floors all my life, and you don't do two floors, okay. two, all so. Right. All right, uh, Commissioner Kuya. Uh, it doesn't matter to me at this point. I mean, the, the one issue that we talk about is potential pickleball stripes down the in the future, but as Mr. Function stated, that that game isn't necessarily played as well on that material. So it's you know we keep if it's not so, played well so on that you're, material. So you're okay either way. I'm okay, okay. either way. I guess okay. um, we're going to go with the, Di Donato. Uh, I, I I personally think that the price is going to be better. <clears throat> excuse me, if we do all four at the same time. Correct. Uh, that's number one. Um, um, as far as some of the other things, I don't disagree with what's, what's been said, but I, I think one of the reasons we're, we're looking at this is because of cost, and I don't know that doing two now and two later is going to mess, mess that up. And the other thing I, I want to say is I, f I follow sports a lot and, and did a lot of sports um, injuries and, and, and whatnot in my practice, and I, so I have an interest in it. And I know that there have been wars in some some towns, when you take away tennis courts and make pickleball yeah. courts, and I, while I'm, I'm I'm happy about pickleball, I think it's great for a certain ages uh, group uh, it so keeps them active, but I, I don't know that we should take away the tennis court. Plus, we got the as, as Mark, right. our city manager said, you got the comp land that you got to worry about. You, you're supposed to have X number of tennis courts, you know, and all that's in there. So at least it was the last time I looked at it. I'm sure it's still there. You, you would be okay with four? Yes. Okay, that's good. Commissioner Quillianis? All right, I'm, I'm okay with four. Okay, that's good. No, I'm, I got one more <laughs> caveat. I want at least one stripe for pickleball. We got to give the people in that neighborhood at least one stripe pickleball court. Um, I'd say it does that. not take, I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll argue that whole comp you don't plan have to get excited technicality. About it, no, I'll argue that one tech technical. There is a tennis court there, so we're not taking away a tennis court by right. having letting right. allowing somebody to go play a pickleball game That's on a tennis court. We have not taken a tennis court away okay. from them, so therefore, at least one court needs to be striped for for pickleball. So, so four or with one. one. I support give me that. One. Okay, with everybody. Uh, yeah, I would support right. that, and I think it's uh, enough to give. The potential pickleball players and uh, without uh, no more comments the let's move on with life may i have a motion to do four with striping yeah, one i make a motion that we approve uh, this uh special consent item uh 18 um with all four courts and one stripe for pickleball so move so it'd be a combo tennis and pickleball you don't so move. I, I made the motion. I'll second, second it. <laughs> but, but I'm losing right. my mind slowly. <laughs> Can I have a clarification? The pickleball court, is that going to be a couple courts in that one quadrant overlined, or is it just going to be one? It'll be one. One, one pickleball one court on each for each tennis court. Yeah, one pickleball one. court for each tennis court. Oh, you can't put a pickleball court on each don't side of the line? The no, you can't do that over here. It will look like a maze. It, it doesn't work. It has to be within, because you want to use the same net netting too. So one pickleball court for each tennis court. Oh man! I feel show, like we can. Well, you, you, I just yeah, feel like we can see them up two. here. Yeah. It, it, it won't be taking anything away. It'll just be adding a, a chance to play pickleball. It's, 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 but I, I just want to try to get two in that quadrant. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I don't think it's gonna work. Maybe there's enough room to do it that way, but so. Where the blue is, they Steady have an alternative now. striping. Oh. Yes, they have it yeah, there. Yeah, that's it all. There, yeah. You still play tennis there. You just have an alternative striping if you want to play pickleball. Mm -hmm. That's all. Why don't, why don't we do this? Go ahead and approve the four with one striping. Let the city manager provide information to each of us as far as the rest of the details about the striping. Is that what we're interested in? How does it look and stuff like that? I don't care how it looks. And, and then I, if, I've and actually it, seen them 
pickleball is outlined on, on the tennis court before. Well, we're not, we're, fine. we don't have a problem with what we're proving tonight with the material. The I don't have a problem. No, okay, problem. that's the key. And, and then, um, can you accommodate that? I mean, the I Yes, sir. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? We're going to go ahead and approve the four with a one pickleball. I don't think we're going to get around that at all. And then, and then um, the city manager is going to uh, provide us some background as far as what that would actually look, out, look like. And if there's any objection to any of the commissioners, we can come, up, come back with it. Because I, as I understood, the decisions on pickleball were not made. All you were looking for was the Versa Court tonight, yes. right? And at some point, we were going to talk about pickleball. Yeah, the main thing with the court, you can't, with the nets and stuff, that's why you can't do two on one court. You'd end up making it a full pickleball court because you use the same nets as a tennis court. Well, okay. oh, I see. So you use the same. You use configurations the same. I see is the tennis courts laid out and then the pickleball courts on each side of the net perpendicular to the way the tennis courts are. So you get two on both sides, but you can't no, the tennis court, the pickleball courts sit with inside of the tennis court. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's good. Did we oh. find a solution? Yeah. Okay. The motion's on the floor. We're ready to go. So we have a motion. But, but there's nothing to come back with. Because when they order this, they have to order that striping. So, I, I, I mean, other than colors, I don't, we're, are we getting into, we're not getting we're into colors. Is you guys are going to make those I think scrolls. we're set with one, tent, one with the pickleball line. There we go. Is everybody happy? Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. Roll call, please. I'm ready. Commissioner D. Donato. Yes. Commissioner Koulianis. Yes. Commissioner Koulias. Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner. Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Function. Thank you. All right, the next one is award file number elect, uh, 240107, electronic plan review services, um, city manager, of course. Yes, I'll go ahead and Janina make a quick report on this. Oh, Janina, Obviously, it's I'm there sorry. because of the Good price. evening, Ms. Lewis. Okay, thank you. Um, Janina Lewis, Procurement Services Directors. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, what the city staff is asking for is a period of five years for a permit implementation software. Uh, the total amount is 396,000, some change. Uh, this system allows for the submittal of applications through an online portal and to perform concurrent plan reviews and allows for the ability to meet uh, virtually with the applicant and the developer to work through issues in real time. And the city staff, um, Initially, they got this in 2021, and the reason we chose this particular software is that it incorporates into our Navaline system, which is a big key for the city. Um, that software is used in everything we do. Uh, since the implementation, um, we've been successful in eliminating all paper submissions, and they've been able to collect digital copies for the projects, as well as provide the TRC with um, actual information digitally. This in turn has allowed it to be better refined in the permitting process from four different types of submissions into one clearinghouse. Um, the turnaround time has greatly improved and human error has greatly diminished due to the automated controls that are built into this particular software. And this software will cover, like I said, the five year period. Um, to top that off, Dave Gilson, the building development director also worked with the software um, people to negotiate a better price. I sat in on that negotiation and we worked out like the number of users, the specific controls they have, the licenses agreements. And with that, I'll turn that over. If you have any questions about the permit side, Dave is here as well. Okay. Um, Mr. Gilson, do you have anything to add before I go to public comments and then we can come back with specific questions to you? Okay, as uh, Janina mentioned, they, in between the last um, contract and now, they've added a, an additional feature where we're buying five multiple user stations. Uh, it's unlimited users for those. Initially, we had 30 single users. So I can go into it if, if you choose, but we're able to reduce the amount of single users to 20 
and then we're buying five unlimited user stations and we're going to give, for an example, we're going to give one to fire department, one to utilities, one to uh, the police department. And then we're, we have one, Karen Lemons, and, and a couple other people very seldom use it. So we're going to have one catch-all for people that really don't use it that often. And uh, the, the main reason for that was I'm anticipating growth over five years. My thought process would was that we're going to exceed 30 people that we're going to use it because we're nearing that right now. So now we're going to have 20 single users, which will probably be accurate for those five years. And then with the five unlimited user stations, we have unlimited growth. Um, and the other thing I thought was rather interesting between the last contract and this contract, the last contract increased 10% over three years during non-inflationary times. And this contract is increasing 4% over five years. So I'd like to lock in the five years because we're less than 1% per year. Okay. Any other questions? What we're going to do is go to public comments. Okay. Public comments. Anybody with public comments on this item? Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gilson, the only question I have is, um, I know in Mr. Poulos's audit report, there was um, uh, one of the processes that were involved um, was actually where we used the software, but that didn't eliminate having to do something else on another um, desktop or something near entering additional information for a different type of uh, administrative item. Um, have we gotten past that? Or I, I, I think that people were going to work on that to try and, in other words, there was another piece of the system that had not been subscribed to that was supposed to get us past that. And I'm not sure whether that happened or what the status of all of that is. That's kind of recently came out in the wash. So our, our base system is Navalign. I think we can all agree that's not going, going anywhere, that we're knee deep in Navaline. So we're probably not going to go away from Navalign. The initial thought was this was going to completely integrate with Navaline. What's come out is Navaline is effectively the financial side of what we do, among other things. And this has a financial side, but if we use it, then we it won't work well with the rest of our financial side, which is a Navaline. my opinion, I, and I believe um, well, Suzanne would agree with us. When we, we do the bulk of the work in EPR, and then we do all the financial side in Navaline, and all because of the, we're doing all the financial side in Navaline, it integrates with everything else in the city seamlessly. There is a certain amount of double entry but we've actually worked that down, and it's very minimal now from when we first started, well, when I first started. The double entry was, it seemed a little overwhelming, but we've been able to work between the two systems and we've got the double entry down where it's not really that, that cumbersome okay. anymore. All righty. Um, so, I, I just want to make sure that we're, I, I know that you've said a lot there, but the bottom line is, are we still implementing parts of it or people are getting accustomed to um, using the entire uh, capability of the system, I guess, is what I'm getting at. If you could speak just a little louder into the microphone. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So as far as EPR, I believe that there's still some untapped uh, resources in there. I use the um, analogy of like an iPhone. You know, we can probably program the space shuttle with the iPhone, but none of us know how. 
the iPhone does way more than we'll ever utilize. And I think that's where we're at with it's um, more it's more capable than what okay what we're I currently thought, using. I'm sorry. But we are learning to expand those capabilities. Okay. All right. Um, let me go to other commissioners. Vice Mayor Eisner. Is this going to be a replacement? Because I'm going to be on the same question as what the mayor just said, because we were kind of sold the bill of a software program that was going to be the end all. And now you're coming in with something. Um, it's a little bit over my pay scale, but it sounds like we're doing something either to replace what's not working. Is that what I'm understanding? No, I don't believe so. Previously, we did everything in paper, and then we just entered the data into Navaline, and it was just textual data. Now we have effectively a clearinghouse for all documents, so we have all documents in one place. We do double entry in Navaline because yeah. Navaline has been a long-standing software here and most likely will be forever. Um, so it is a standalone system. We're, we've made the, um, the transition completely as of January 1st. We're 100% paper-free. We're still dealing with things from pr prior to that. But now, anything with a, a permit date of January 1st or after, we don't have to look in multiple places. We only have to look in one place now. And then as time goes by, obviously that would be very helpful. So all documents with every permit, of course, planning zoning uses it too, but all documents from the application to the plans to all of our comments, you know, in, in, we used to send comments via email. Well, now you have to save those in some place so you can find them later. All of our comments, all of our communication goes back and forth through this system. So we don't have to search everywhere for anything. Every permit, and then many permits prior to January 1st, but every permit since January 1st, we have one place to go. See, I'm not uh, disputing the benefits of this. I'm just more concerned that we spent money that went for very little in the past. And that's, and now we're spending more money to correct those issues. That's what I'm, where I'm going. Not, I understand how it's gonna help, <clears throat> but we were sold at least a bill of goods that what we were buying the last time was the end all. And now, is it just improved or is this is just, I, I understand it's gonna be better. So I, I don't know if you wanna answer that but it, it seemed like that, for, at least from the audit that we read, that there was issues with it. Are we trying to correct those issues? Is that where we're going with that? As I recall, the issue with the audit was the integration with Navaline. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. what it's come down to is the financial component is the stumbling block they have a financial component if we choose to use it. But because we use Navaline for all of our other financial components, it's not, it's not practical. And I think ultimately, once again, this is my opinion, I think ultimately it was a decision made on our side that it would be better to stay, have them two separate systems. And to a certain extent, it's nice to have um, a backup to any system because if by chance this company goes out of business or whatever, we still have an avalanche. I have no further question. Yeah. I, I understand. Um, let, let me go to any of the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Kuya, you got something? Sure. I just uh, by doing this upgrade and you put in the memo, this helps facilitate just better communication between uh, the different departments and, and reviewing the process and, and, and the permits. This will help the communication between inner departments. Oh, it, it, it already has um, since I've been yeah, back. Been. We've uh, taken the time because um, my team and PNZ use it primarily. We've gotten pretty well versed in it. So we've been able to take the time to go to the other departments and have training classes with them and then bring them up to speed. It is working much better than Obviously, when we first got it, technology is always difficult to, you know, get used to. Oh, yeah. But uh, we're working very well between the different departments. 
So, so right now you you've, uh, haven't really untapped its full potential yet? I don't believe we ever will. Okay. I well, mean, it's just one of those programs that it seems to do everything. But it, as, as I will say, this company is very good as far as support. We send them an email, we want a Zoom meeting, they give us an hour Zoom meeting and answer all of our questions or get back with us. And every single Zoom meeting I've had with them, some nugget comes out like, ooh, we can do that? <laughs> and we start doing that. Does this also help uh, the residents or the you know developers on, on their end too, being able to review stuff or communicate with um, the city? Yes, well, b because they upload all their documents it's in one place. When we get done with them, it goes back to the same place. An email is sent to them. They can go in at any time, retrieve those documents, look at them, look at our comments, respond to our comments, respond to uh, updated plans. Uh, where it seems to really shine is um, when people change. You know, they change their plans. They'll upload a, a new document and instead of us rifling through a bunch of paper trying to figure out where we used to be and where we are now, it's all in one place. Thank you. I'm, I'm willing to support it. It seems like it's, uh, you know, every, everything, part of the goals that we have in helping our departments and, and giving them all the tools they need to um, communicate and, and speed things up as well, too, and, and help the residents. So, thank you. Commissioner Kuliana, she got your light on. It's, uh, I think it's two, there's two elements to this. Um, one is that the, it's, it's going to be a better system, which <coughs> you've already touched on, that it will facilitate um, our functionality better. Um, let, let's talk about the finances of this. So, so you're, they're ask, you're asking, or they're asking for $396,000 now, right? right? They're not. Uh, it's broken down per year. Oh, it's still yeah. paid per year. It's paid per so year, it's, yes. So the 1% the increase is just because we make a commitment to the, to the five years. That's my understanding. Uh, as I understand it, the, the people I'm dealing with are going to be watching this YouTube, so you know, I might be speaking out of school here a little bit. But this says it's increasing it by 1%, but in very quick math, I came up with four percent over five years, so that's less than one percent. No, well, the that the first year, the, the first year is higher because of whatever implementation there is. I tested uh, year two and, and to three to four, uh, and it's it is come it comes out to one percent. Okay. So, um, so what's what this uh, this Utah stuff that's in here? What what is is that just to show us a sample of? Like, what is the purpose of that? Where Where are you at? Uh, I'm looking at um, the document, Cloud Solutions, uh, FL Executed, PAACS, and it talks about cloud solutions administered by the state of Utah. What What's the significance of that? Okay, are, are we looking at the pr uh, the price sheet or looking the at, contract? Uh, you got the yeah. BOC mem a memo, then there's one item, and then the, memo, the, the um, second item memo. after that, BOC memo. Utah is probably it says, oh, we're piggybacking on it? Yes. Yeah, the, you're going to be able to speak more to that. I, that's going to be more of a Janina question. Okay. Can, can she answer that? Sorry. <laughs> um, I think what you're looking at is actually, this is a, um, a NASBO contract, if I'm saying this right. Let me double check my information. So that's based on a cooperative. The state of Utah is probably the lead on this particular contract. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I'm sorry. So on a cooperative contract, let's say like the state of Florida enters into a contract agreement with this particular company, then um, that's what it's based off of. That's the name of the contract, the cloud solutions with the state of Utah. So then anybody can it's part of the co-op can use that contract. Oh, it's like a piggyback. Card. Yes, okay. correct. Template. That's does all that, I have. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Th thank Sorry. you. Is that it, Commissioner Kulianis? Okay. Uh, nothing. Okay. I, I don't think there's, you've answered our questions. I don't think there's any um, objections. 
May I have, if there's no further comments, may I have a motion to approve and a second, please? No moved. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Di Donato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gilson. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. All right, the next item is the award uh, file number 240073, fuel, ethanol, diesel. C manager, of course, Ms. Lewis. Yes, good evening again, Janina Lewis, Procurement Services Director. Um, city staff is recommending the award of the fuel services bid to Palmdale Oil Company in an estimated annual amount of $450,000. We put this out to bid, and as you can see from the bid tab, we based it off of the um, fixed fee price. And with that, I'll turn it over for any questions. Okay, uh, public comments. Are there any public comments on this item? Mr. Jump, any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, Ms. Lewis, I, I know you and I just exchanged uh, an email with the uh, city manager. You double check the, um, the wide variation between the lowest bidder and the other two. I, and I, you double checked them, and that's, uh, they have much lower overhead than the other two individuals that bid on the thing. Um, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Palmdale Oil is a very large entity, and with that aspect, they're able to offer a more competitive price. Yeah, that's in case anyone had a question on that. Any other commissioner comments? I do. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, do you keep tabs of other bids like this that are so high? I mean, I know you can't control the bids. I I'm finding it very hard when I saw this to compare, I don't care how economically functioning somebody is, how somebody could come up four times higher. I really just can't. So my question to you is when you get such an outlandish bid to me in my business that was called a home run when you, if you can get that thing if palmdale oil inc did not put this bid in we'd be stuck with a 21 22000 bid and we'd have to choose one so my question is do we keep people like this at bay somewhat or with knowledge that they were very high bidding before well, we do look at historical uh, bids when we when we redo these. So like this is a five year. So when we go out to bid again, we've looked at previous pricing and we see who has put in and their pricing. We also, I also have the, the pricing from the state fuel contract, if you'd like to see that as well. Um, and we would, if sometimes when we get in bids, we can compare and see what else is out there. Well, I look through these. Um... I looked through the tabulations. Uh, I just have to be perfectly honest. My mouth fell open. It was, I was kind of shocked. So that's all I could say. And, you know, when I see such a big difference, it scares me. I, I don't like seeing that. I, you know, on a huge contract, um, yes, something like this. I didn't call you to ask. I, I don't think I called the city manager to ask. I saw this and I was like, wow, I have to ask you when you're here, how did that come up like that? That's, that's ridiculous pricing. Uh, I can't say. Most of them, uh, when we talk to the vendor, Palmdale Oil, all three vendors get their fuel from the Port of Tampa. So everyone's getting the fuel from the same place and paying the same price according to the, I'm not even going to get this, the Opus. Um, which is the oil price information service. So they're all paying the same price at the port. It's just their costs and getting it delivered. And I, I can't predict how each vendor will bid. I don't know their overhead costs and what it takes to maintain the particular company. I Believe me, I'm not picking on you. I'm just looking at it. They're going, 
is each individual being chauffeur limousine there? I mean, it's it's really that wild, and that's all I really want to say. I, I mean, I, I just, I look at this and I just, it's scary. It is just scary to hear something like that. But I know, I just have to, I have to share my that's opinion okay. of what I see. This this was wild, you know? For for a smaller contract like that for gas and, and diesel, it was just, okay. That's all I have to say. Sir, uh, any other comments? Mm -hmm. Mr. Kalianis. Ms. Lewis, as always, I'm impressed. Uh, thank you very much for your detail and the fact that they're buying them from the same place is, uh, you know, it, it, it's... That was a learning you experience. You do your homework, yeah. let me put it that way. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. There's no further comments. Uh, may I have a motion and a second, please? No moved. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner DiLato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay. 21, update designation of acting city manager. Uh, this is straightforward. Do you have anything you want to add to this? No, it's just by the charter, and I've got to replace the third person because Paul Smith's retirement, and and so okay. Renee Vincent is, is who I want to put on that list as the three. Right. Uh, Mr. Smith is out. Uh, Mr. Or Scott Young, Fire Chief Scott Young, is at the top of the list now. And followed primary. By I call it primary. But uh, primary, and then uh, Mr. You, Robertson is yeah, after. As you know, I'm not usually gone great stretches, but if I were to be, then that's kind of secession. Also, remember, from the charter language, this commission has the authority to go in and, and do something else-wise. But, okay. but uh, it, this has worked okay. so far. So. Um, Public comments, any public comments? Mr. Jump, any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, if there are any questions from the commission, go ahead. I just have one, uh, just one comment. The, um, you know, we discussed possibly three, up to three people um, being uh, alternating as some form of, a, of training. And we talked about them taking ICMA courses and the city paying for that. Um, just so you're aware, and I, I actually, uh, Chief Young uh, informed me that you have to have, in order to take the ICMA courses mm -hmm. and to get accredited, accredited as an uh, with ICMA, you have to be an, a, an assistant city manager. So you can take the courses, but you cannot become an ICMA uh, certified uh, individual without having that, that, that role. Um, so anyways. Yeah. But Again, the, that's going to come later on. That comes later. I'm just, yeah, I'm just pointing it out. As a, as a city thing. It doesn't affect yeah. this right here, but yeah. I'm just saying. If we're going to offer those courses, uh, that ability to take those courses and to get certified, they can't get certified as a department head. They have to be certified as an assistant. Have to, they have had to have held that position of assistant that's, city manager. That's yeah. part of the program. The, yeah. You know, yeah. rather than just one, you could have, you could, some cities have three, four, five I've, assistant city managers. And, and so this is, this is one that's simply going to step in for Mr. LaCourris when he's on vacation and things like that. No, I, I understand. Okay. No, I'm, I'm in, in, uh, um, it, it, it's I'm in agreement a, with this. It's not this a designation item. as assistant city manager. He's basically a primary for Mr. No, I, I understand. Okay. I'm just saying we, 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 talk, we talked about right. giving them courses and them becoming certified somewhere down the road, but... That's something we'd have, that's a hurdle we'll have to jump over at some point, that yeah. they have to hold that. Well, I'm all have, for it. I just, they have to hold that, <laughs> that it technically have to hold that right. position to right. get the certification. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank okay. you. Um, all right. Any other comments? Um, motion to approve the city manager's recommendation in a second? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Donato. Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vadikiotis? Yes. Okay.
Number 22, uh, discussion direction on city attorney uh, search. Um, city manager, of course, I'm going to ask you to do it. Yeah, I'll start, from the, I'll start from the city manager aspect, and then Mr. Lewis can help me when we get down to what we're, we're asking for tonight. Obviously, you know the situation with the city attorney. We went out for one set of proposals. Uh, we eliminated everybody. There was nobody in there to, to choose. We went through a second round and we only got one bid and it was a rather unique bid combining um, Mr. Lewis's firm, Mr. Um, Mr. Salzman. It was a rather unique bid uh, for three year contract. Obviously with the situation, the ideal, the ideal situation is finding somebody um, to step in and I'll give Mr. Lewis the technical terms of how it has to be done, but um, to step in and, and take the remainder of that contract over. And we do have a person from a very reputable firm in the area that's a prospect um, to do that. Um, what we're asking for tonight, I, I have, I've spoken, and this has all happened in the last three days. Uh, I've spoken to that person, um, and obviously the, the firm of Johnson Pope, who, who she works for, and uh, let me get to her name, can I get her mixed it up with someone know? Colleen Flynn. Um, again, the, the purpose of the night is that would be ideal if we could work on that. Obviously, we have to come up with, um, first of all, we have to come up with if that's a situation where this firm and this individual, which I think it is from talking to her um, in their firm's negotiation with Mr. Lewis and Mr. Salzman, that could come in and step in with the terms of the contract, which would put us right on track pretty fast. Obviously, between the time this is done, whether between this meeting and next meeting, you have to have some decision or comfort letter of either individual interviews with this person, talking with them or, or group or however you set up to do um, if it can be executed. So what I'm kind of asking you tonight and then I'll have Mr. Lewis stepped in is to, to entertain and looking at the prospect of this firm and individual. I know the individual mainly what I know her from is the juvenile welfare board. Obviously with cops and kids and stuff, we deal with juvenile welfare board, which she's been an attorney for a long time. But I know from my sources, she's also done some work, not as the attorney, but for the city of, of St. Pete Beach um, recently. So um, again, I've talked to her. It's a prospect that we can pull this off legally with the attorneys putting together the structure of this thing for the rest of the time. Um, in, and are looking, and when I say are looking, the two city attorneys, um, myself, and availability of other firms and other places that run cities is going to be the same as our last two bids. I, I don't think we're going to get, if we get something, we're going to get something like the first round of going. There's just, there's just not the resources of these companies that are doing other cities to expand more. So I don't look for if we have to move out of that position and plus we got a rather unique contract that intertwines it's been working great so so in my mind the ideal situation would be somebody to come in and step in mr lewis's firm and take over that dual arrangement um especially if we keep in the same terms to do so i'm asking for your direction if you want the two attorneys to move forward with uh, putting that together and then deciding tonight um how you want to you know, address them, um, you know, meeting, talking, interviewing, one-on-ones, or how you want to do um, this one prospect that uh, we may be able to pull this off with. So okay. I'm just waiting for your, yeah. I mean, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Salzman at his other meeting when he hears tomorrow, waiting for your input on, on moving forward. Okay, Mr. Lewis, you got anything to add? Yeah, so ultimately, I talked to Mr. Salzman about Ms. Flynn. Uh, I have no, I'm familiar with the firm. Uh, I'm, not too, I'm not concerned about the qualifications uh, from either from Ms. Flynn or her firm to step in. Ultimately, it comes along down the lines of, is she, can we make the term, is, would Ms. Flynn and her uh, firm be comfortable with the terms as they are, or do they need to be modified? Ultimately, Mr. Salzman, even though it was a joint proposal, Mr. Salzman's firm and my firm have two separate contracts. Oh, so okay. to extricate my firm and myself from this is not going to affect Mr. Salzman's. Now, if it's, especially if Ms. Flynn is more than, more than willing to just accommodate what uh, Ms. Kardash was originally doing. Um, that can be handled with just the negotiations, but on my end, to extricate myself, it's, I serve at the pleasure of 
the city. So my firm can easily step out as long as the terms, um, and if Ms. Flynn and the city, if the city is happy with Ms. Flynn and Ms. Flynn is happy with the terms, that is not an issue whatsoever um, to extricate myself, extricate myself and my firm for, and for her to sub in. It, it's more of just a putting, putting the correct paperwork together. Okay. All right. Um, before we go to commissioner comments, let me go to public comments. Uh, so the item, so well, to summarize, um, Ms. Kardash is uh, no longer with uh, the, uh, Mr. Lewis's firm uh, for reasons unrelated to the city of Tarpon Springs. And, um, and the city manager has been working along with Mr. Salzman and Mr. Lewis to try and find a solution to replacing Ms. Kardash. And the one that has surfaced is Ms. Colleen Flynn, who works for Johnson Pope um, out of Clearwater, and they have an office in Tampa as well. Johnson Pope is a very old firm. I'll say more about that in a little while. Um, but so I, I think that's the favored approach at this point. The other option, as the city manager mentioned, is to do something else a little, um, a little uh, more traditional and, and, and looking, continuing to look. But as he said, we didn't have much luck when we uh, finally wound up uh, hiring Mr. Salzman and Ms. Kardash, uh, and, and that was uh, fortuitous, and we're very grateful that that worked out that way. So that's the summary of it. Are there any public comments? Mr. Jumper, any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. We do have a raised hand. I'll allow the first person in. Okay. And if you can, unmute and state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Dirtalakis, 514 Ashland Avenue. Uh, what Mark is proposing sounds like a good short-term fix, but I still feel in the long run, there's two options you have to put in an RFP or another firm. You have to look at the times are a little different. The last time we were looking for an RFP, <coughs> the city was in a little turmoil. We were doing a special counsel investigation. We were under suit from trust to no, but things have settled down, and I think this board has shown some civility of late that may be a different tone going forward for anyone attracting to come in as city attorney services. However, I still feel an option that has not been explored as much as possible is, again, creating our own legal staff, hiring a qualified attorney, a paralegal to assist, and then this way you have your own dedicated attorney who's not uh, involved with other cities and other cases. And then if you have special situations like in the past where you have to go out and hire specialized attorneys, you can do that. Or if you need to hire another attorney for the code enforcement board, uh, so the city has a rep and the code enforcement board, those are things that can be over, you know, overcome. But in the long run, you may want to look at setting up our own legal services. But in the meantime, uh, what Mark is suggesting is a good plan. But then after you've settled in with this attorney, you put an RFP out, she can, if she can apply for that also, <coughs> and then you can maybe see what other options you have. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Koulianis, you've got your light on. Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, Mr. Jump, anybody else? And we do not have any other okay. raised hands. Excuse me, go ahead, Commissioner okay. Williams. So um, I uh, made a couple phone calls to attorneys that I work with on Ms. Flynn and, and got stellar um, reviews uh, from them. Um, the, um, I think we, we need to have, a, I would like to interview her. I, I mean, I think we all would want to do that to, um, before obviously uh, engaging her. Uh, I think we need to dis disclose some things. I don't think any of these things are, are disqualifying uh, facts, but you know, we, I don't want these things to come up later. Um, Mr. Salzman's wife is a partner of Johnson Pope. So just, just so that's, you know, again, disclosed. I, I don't believe it disqualifies Ms. Flynn at all, but it needs, to be, <coughs> it should be disclosed. Um, I would, I'd also, I, I have 
again, disclosures. I don't think these are, again, disqualifying items. Um, the, um, uh, my personal attorney is somebody in Johnson Pope that's handled two legal matters for me. Um, so, I, again, I don't think, and, and that's something I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Lewis if maybe he could uh, advise on that. Um, so that's one. Um, the, um, I've also been hired by uh, Johnson Pope uh, by three different attorneys. I had looked up just before the meeting. Um, I've done a forensic expert witness testimony for Johnson Pope, and I've done some business valuations for their firm on, on litigation and some business consulting matters. Again, I'd like you to be able to opine on that. I, I don't want to put you on the spot if you, have, if you need to research or whatever. Um, I just want to make sure that if we're hiring a, a firm and that me having had interaction with that firm would any, in any way disqualify them. I would not think so, but I'm not. My biggest I, concern, is, again, as, as it even stands statute, is do you, is there, do you have any financial interest in whether or not Ms. Flynn w were to be hired? None whatsoever. And ultimately, this is not even, and at this point, it's, you know, it's not even a final hearing of it, whatnot. I've, obviously, there's, no, there's never a bad time to disclose, right. um, but uh, especially early on, but I don't see that as, as yeah. going to be an issue. I just, again, I, yes. want, I want to get everything out there so uh, these things don't come back as um, bigger issues than they actually are. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I mean, Johnson Pope's the largest firm in Pinellas County and maybe the largest uh, local firm in, in the Tampa Bay area. Um, first class firm, um, her credentials are stellar. Um, so I would have no issue. But again, I'd, I'd like to interview her just uh, I think every other board member would want to have a conversation, whether it's here uh, doing it um, in, in with the public or having private interviews. Again, at some point, she needs to come forward to the to the public. So but anyways, that those are the issues I wanted to bring up. Okay, Vice Mayor Eisner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with what Commissioner Koulianis just said, only I don't have the uh, disclosures to make as he has. And, I didn't think that was a big deal as well. I also would like to meet with uh, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Flynn and have an interview, but I'd like it to be a private interview, one-on-one, -on -one, not where we're discussing it as a board. Um, what I'm trying to understand is, so she would be taking over the contract that's presently Mr. Lewis's contract? Is that what I was to understand? Well, you would, you would need a new contract with her, with Miss with with Miss Flynn and her firm. Um, well, but I mean, it would be a change in name, but would we be negotiating a a new um, price, a new travel? Uh, that's my question. The vacation is it'll be in in, in essence the they're agreeable with the terms that were there. Now, there may be a, once they get into the actual, okay, we're talking to negotiate, there may be a few things, but in essence, it was taken over with the terms that Mr. Lewis's firm uh, did. So again, you gotta have to put that on paper and get that okay. set up, but that's the understanding of essentially the same, the same contract fees, prices and stuff of Mr. Lewis's firm. Okay, uh, that's pretty much the questions. I, I would still like to get some better answers on that, but that's pretty much, you know, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to, you know, pursue that. Okay. Um, Commissioner Cleos. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I can't, I'm sorry, I didn't know which one no, you were no, saying. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, I concur uh, pretty much with what's said. However, I too made a, a few phone calls from people I know in, in, in uh, the law and there just isn't a lot of what we're looking for right now. Uh, I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Um, I'm okay with a trial, and I, I certainly understand everybody, you know, wanting to, wanting to talk or have a meet and greet or something. I, I concur with that, but I, as far as an RFP, I'm not against that. 
I just don't know where we're going to really go with that. And this this uh, attorney seems the one that proposed here seems qualified. Uh, so that's just how I feel. Commissioner Diaz. I don't mind a trial period, but I mean, I know I know she's a great attorney, but I see a lot of labor and employment. And right now we need a city attorney for a lot of everything, you know, someone who's going to sit in a meeting. So I'd like to see some more of her experience regarding a lot of the city attorney everyday operations. Um, I'd be interested in an RFP and going back out again just to see what we got. What, what would be out there, but um, there, just we need to do something at some point. And as Commissioner DiDonato said, we may have limited um, people apply, but I believe we have to try. So I'd be willing to bring her on more of a trial experience uh, and also have an RFP out there to see what we could get. Thank you. Um, as far as interviews, I, I'd probably do something like Zoom or something like that with uh, Ms. Flynn. I would be okay with that. She's she's not um, she's a very experienced lawyer. She's not anything um, inexperienced. I can tell you that based on her credentials and also uh, her work product. She she um, um, worked in Chicago for five years before she came down to uh, Florida. So, um, <clears throat> and also know um, Mr. Tim Johnson, the founder of Johnson Pope, and he's an outstanding attorney. Mr. Ed Armstrong was a member of Johnson Pope. He's a very good attorney. And of course, uh, Mr. Charles Samarcus is a, a member of the, uh, uh, the law firm too. And, and Johnson Pope is, has always had uh, exceptionally good attorneys um, and produced good attorneys from their staff. So I'm comfortable all the way around. Plus, I think as the uh, conversation that city manager and I had, I <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind if Ms. Flynn uh, came up a little bit of a bump in the road, she's got the depth of her law firm that she can go to to seek any kind of advice or, or um, uh, counsel that she might need and kind of um, help us in that regard. <clears throat> so I'm 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 comfortable with Mrs. Flynn. I, I, I um, and then the other thing as far as the RFP, I think in an ideal world we'd probably do that. But um, in <laughs> I, I can say that um, in my discussions with uh, with Mrs. Jacobs, uh, the city manager, myself, and the things that um, I'd ask Ms. Kardash to do that um, uh, Ms. Jacobs has actually filled in for that and provided information to me. The um, we, there's a whole lot of stuff that is in limbo right now, along with changes in our rules of procedure and things of that nature that need to come back uh, to us that I, I don't know that we can afford. Um, um, I have no doubts in Ms. Lewis and her ability to put an RP out there fairly quick, but I, I think we would wind up losing uh, another month or two um, as far as an RP. And I don't know, honestly, that we would ever get anybody as good as uh, Ms. Flynn looks. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm, again, I think an interview is good, but my interview is going to be something a little more casual with the, through a, a Zoom or if she happens to be in town or something, I'll, I'll meet her in my office or somewhere in City Hall. But that's as far as I want to take that. Go ahead, Commissioner Colianis. Um, uh, Mayor, I think you're right. And, and let me ask Mr. Lewis, under the terms of your current contract, uh, how can we? How would we be able to terminate your contract if you were still here or Miss Kardash was here with 30 days notice? Correct. 30 days notice. Okay. So we have no. It's really a no risk situation because she she comes highly recommended. She's from a first class firm. Um, in 30 days, we could terminate it if for some reason we're not happy. So I would be in favor of just moving forward and and yeah, taking voting for. It. Yeah, it's, um, I okay. agree. So, um, say, Manji, do you have any last words on this? And I'll try and come up with a motion to see if. Yeah, no, from this, if you do that, and again, 
the idea and talking with Trish, Trish, you know, my idea was to have Trish set up, however, Zoom, we'd have the capability to set up Zoom interviews for each of you with, if, if somebody wanted to meet with her personally and stuff, I'm sure we can arrange that, but, but while, while the negotiations going on with our attorneys to put the legal stuff of this together, um, it'd be easy to go through Trish and Trish would be ready to set up with each of you however you individually want to do it. With, again, whether it's a Zoom, an in-person, phone, phone interview or whatever, however each of you prefer okay. within this next two week period. Okay, so. Um, That's your wishes. Why don't we have a motion to uh, authorize the city manager and also Mr. Lewis to uh, move forward and with discussions with Ms. Flynn to uh, bring Johnson Pope and Ms. Flynn on board um, in, in, um, in, and that would replace Ms. Kardashian's firm. And, um, and then also, pardon me? Mr. Mayor, sorry to interrupt, but I would include Mr. Salzman, uh, include Mr. Salzman. Oh, of course, yeah, Mr. Salzman as well. I, I'm sorry, thank you for doing that. Um, for Mr. Salzman as well and seeing whether we can actually just have a substitute of terms uh, as they are right now. And if not, the city manager will come back with whatever modifications would have to be and leave any um, um, interviews up to uh, individual commissioners to arrange through uh, our executive assistant, Trish Hickey. Is that- So is moved. That, that's a motion? So Second. moved. Okay. Any comments, further comments on that? Okay. Um, Roll call, please. Commissioner DiDonato? Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Kouyas? Yes. Vice Mayor Eisner? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Is that it? Okay. Unless you want to take another vote again. No. <laughs> uh, let's go to board and staff comments. Uh, Assistant Chief Ruggiero? We have nothing, sir. Nothing, okay. Uh, Mr. Lewis, anything? No, you, no, Mr. Mayor. Okay. City Manager Corris. Um, one thing, was, there was a article in the Sun Coast News and editorial piece somebody wrote about enforcement at Howard Park and, uh, and it praised the police for enforcement but said there was more. So I just wanted to assure you that the chief knows, obviously we know our spring break time here, Clearwater everywhere is a nightmare. They did a good job out there and uh, I can assure the people who read that a letter in there praising us but hoping we stay out there that they'll be staying out there at Howard Park and Sunset Beach um, even with the spring break crowds gone there's still the speeding and the problems that we have to control so so they will be on top of, of both of those things during that time period. Okay. Um, Ms. Jacobs. Um, I just wanted to advise the board uh, that the first meeting of the Charter Revision Commission has been set for April 22nd at 2 p.m. in the second floor media room and the agenda could be found on the public portal. Okay. Um, this will be in this, the, 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 the television or whatever it's called. What do we call that? The video? We call it the media. I call, I call it the media room because media we have room. the capabilities of film. having that film. So the public can be watching the whole process. It won't of be charge. live, but it'll be filmed. It will be. It will be. It'll, it will be it'll live. Be live. It'll be okay. live, but it'll be also available for the public to watch the whole. Okay. As important as the charter process is, we thought it was important that we do and, that for And this the one. attorney sitting in on that will be Mr. Salzman or Mr. Lewis? Mr. Mr. Salzman. Okay. For right, right now it's set for Mr. Salzman. Once we get these other arrangements, it yeah. may change. But Mr. Salzman has done the okay. charter board of, of uh, Gulf Boy. He's also done charter committees before and stuff. So right now in this interim period and transition, he will be at the okay. first ones and, and you know, decision of continuing or swift, and that'll be something we'll make later. Okay. Uh, Commissioner DiDonato, do you have anything? Uh, I do. I want to clarify on, on item 15, Savannah Cove. Uh, I voted yes because simply I, I wanted to see what the information was. Uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily a long-term lease person. Also, uh, city manager, um, I, I don't know if we can, and I guess Mr. Lewis needs a, a way in on this too, but one of the things I remember distinctly when I first became commissioner in, in way back in the 90s, um, that we talked about the golf course and, and I had played a lot of golf there over the years and, and I observed over at least three decades of people getting the lease, pouring money into the course, making money and then stop, stop taking care of the course. And so by the time we leased it again, we had to 
consider repairs to the golf course. Um, I don't, I'm not for that 100% at all. And with Savannah Cove, I know it's a different situ situation, but I think somewhere in the lease, we need to talk about the condition of the buildings and property at the time, at the end of the lease, if, if they should ever decide to walk, to give the city some, some sense of control. Now, fortunately, we, we decided to take over the golf course. We owned it, so we, we well, I originally was told when I proposed that that we didn't know anything about it, which was true, but we were smart enough to hire somebody that knows something about it. And I, rather than having to go through that, uh, if, if we renegotiate this, this lease, I would like some kind of protection. I don't know how far we can go legally, but some kind of protection that assures that they're gonna uphold their end at the end of the lease, and we're not gonna be left with something that could cost us a lot of money. Do, do you, um... Well, again, that'd be something if it ever was reopened at another time. Yeah, I mean, I don't that would what, all be part I, of it. Not... I don't know the legal aspects of it. I just yeah. know that that happened you mean if we every ten years. That golf course out again? Or? No, we're talking about Savannah. I mean, Savannah. Oh, Cole. yes. No, yes, Savannah. Yeah, Cole. Yeah, if yeah, we yeah, ever yeah. do open up yeah. the negotiation, yeah, that would yeah, be a major part of the negotiation. Exactly. Yeah, since we're no, not opening no, up, I, up I understand now. So, yeah, since we're not opening up yeah. the discussions at this point. No, no, no. At least no, no, it's police. Yeah. You just yeah, investigate I, it. And let me know what we can do. No, that was number one on my. That was number one on my list. If if we if we were engaging in that right now, if we got over the fifty year issue, that was the first. That was the first on my list because I remember, I remember that. And yeah. Okay. Sir, Mr. No comment. Uh, Vice, do you, no, Vice Mayor Eisner. Oh, I have plenty to say. Um, thank you. I'll be quick though. <laughs> I want to thank Mark and uh, Tom for putting the stripes over at the uh, trailer. You know the boat launch. They put the stripes there because now all we got to do is teach people to park their trailers within the stripes because they're all over the place. Um, number two, I was uh, want to thank the police for the trail enforcement. That was an excellent program. I was glad that we uh, were able to get some bicycles to control themselves because that's been an issue. Um, I did participate in Build a Bed. I think it's a great program. We had a good turnout for Advent. Uh, and uh, that was good. I was at the, uh, the, the, the Brothers Doobie the other day, and I want to thank um, the, the whole organization for what was set up. The place was, was slamming. We, the pla everything was done really well. It was really nice. It's my first time being at a City Hall concert, and it was really... I felt very good. I did come incognito, so nobody saw who I was, and I was glad about that. Um, the, I did want to update the board. Um, I wasn't able to go to the um, the CAP Center uh, introduction for the Stephen, you know, uh, project that was over there, and I don't know who's been following or not, but I did make a trip over there, and the... Um, fiberglass is sharp as a razor blade and the city manager knows I've been in contact back and forth with Stephen Oliver about um, not making it as sharp. It's really, really sharp. Um, so I do have an appointment with him Thursday at 1 o'clock to be there to show him just how sharp it is and I'm also going to recommend the possibilities of what he could do to um, not have it be a danger to the kids um, that are that are there. So that was that. Um, I did want to thank Maggie Mooney for um, readjusting our lawyer bill. Um, I did have a conversation with her as well, and I do appreciate that. Um, to all that are enjoying Passover coming up, please have a happy Passover. And number eight is uh, happy birthday to my wife. So, her birthday's coming up, and uh, that's happy birthday, honey. Okay. Well, she's not here, I, but I'm no, but hopefully she's, she's watching, watching me in television okay. land. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I just, um, we're, the city's exceptionally busy. Um, we've been having events. We had um, 
Panellas leadership that Ms. Georgiana Franzis is going through. She contacted me the night before uh, their tour of Tarpon Springs, so I was able to meet them at, at 8.30 along with her and her dad. Um, and they took a, a basically a tour of the Anklo River uh, with the courtesy of uh, St. Nicholas Boat Line and Mr. George Belirus. And um, I thought that was a wonderful opportunity. Um, I, quite frankly, <laughs> talking about unique, I think that there were some amazed looks on people's eyes when they had finished the, the tour and they went down to the sponge docks and, um, and, and they uh, never realized that Tarpon is truly is a hometown. It's not the urban quagmire that they've got in South County that they're having to deal with. So we've got something very, very special here. Um, anyway, uh, and I think our Merchant Association is doing a, a terrific job and, and everything seems to be working pretty well these days. Um, there is a little bit of, um, um, I'm not gonna get any detail. I'm just gonna ask that y'all actually uh, have a conversation with the city manager. Uh, there is a little bit of um, restlessness, I guess that's the best way I can describe it in the art world of Tarpon Springs. And um, there's some things that I dealt with this week, the city manager and I both dealt with this week that, um, um, that in, in, I'm not so sure, I, I don't know whether there would, what, what the end result would be or whether there's anything that has to be done. It would be completely up to the commission in that regard. But I would ask that each of you have a discussion with the city manager on that and see if there's anything that might be of interest to you. And, um, and I'm not sure if you've been contacted by anybody else in that regard, but it's something that I don't particularly want to discuss here tonight. It, you just have to sp speak to the city manager. Is that okay? All right. Yes. All right. Um, that's all I have. It's 10.03. I wish we'd have gotten done sooner, but that's okay. I'll take it. Meeting adjourned at 10.03.